Boys and girls, welcome to the Odd Sided Dice podcast. The Odd Sided Dice follows the adventures of two to four 40 something <laughs> gamers as they delve into the myriad of games that are available today. Now, joining me today, we have an all-star cast, four fantastic podcasters, uh, and the Reed Richards to uh, to my Johnny Storm, of course, is Kieran. Uh, my Ben Grimm, of course, is Ian, and uh, I, I think that makes you Susan there, Matt. Uh, how you doing? <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. She's got the best powers. <laughs> there you go. Flame oh. on. That's it's it, clobbering right? time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, cheers, man. <laughs> oh, uh, good go. morning, oh, gentlemen. How is everyone say? today? Good afternoon. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Very yeah, good. Indeed. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a bit, a bit one of those weird ones now, isn't it? Because it's good morning, good evening, good night type of thing. It's, it's like complete uh, free runnies moments, isn't it? Going on the outside, isn't it? So it's, yeah. it's going to be a. Yeah, I like, I like the way that so like so like Brad's trying to mo- has had to uh, mood light his background <laughs> to try and make it look like it's artificially the evening behind him. But there we go, yeah. it's all uh, <laughs> to blank it's all out golden, the, isn't it? You know what I mean? Blank out the Australian, the burning Australian winter sun. <laughs> oh, summer sun is, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say it's summer, man. Yeah. Uh, we've been sweating like you wouldn't believe. Like last night was one of the worst nights to sleep I've had in ages because it was just brutal. But yeah, man, another beautiful day in sunshine, Australia. You know, we'll get there. Uh, I, was just, I was just telling my wife, because it was my birthday last on Friday, and I was I was always miserable having a birthday in January in England because it's like after after Christmas and it's freezing cold. I said, you know what, next year we've got to go to Australia for my birthday. <laughs> just one, one, one birthday in the sun. <laughs> well, first of all, happy yeah. birthday, birthday to you. <laughs> And, uh, dude, second of all, as a Bostonian Don't... whose birthday is in February, let me just say, I understand being into snow up to your uh, nethers. But, uh, uh, yeah, I, there's a reason I live down here. Yeah, I can understand. <laughs> Actually, one other thing, when, with the intro there as well, the the, the the 40, the 240, or the, in this case, the 440-something gamers, I'm starting to get worried that um, I'm, I've only got I've only got two more years of being in my forties. <laughs> I'm going to be a proper. Oh, I know. I'm going to get away yeah. with it. We, we we sort of touched on this when we were trying to do the intro bit for the last episode, but obviously. Oh, we did, didn't we? Things got cut, and we we, we were almost at that stage of that 20th century shift to 21st century Fox. So yeah. we're gonna have to change all the logos. We're gonna have to change all the intros and everything like that. So it's all, yeah. it's all gonna go. Yeah. We just said we're gonna yeah the the odd sided searchlight podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's just gonna descend to those being those uh, Grandpa Simpson and his long bearded mate in the uh, in the old people home going, oh, "Damn you kids, you didn't know. <laughs> Damn, it's so bad easy." Does I'm that mean you're yelling six... at clouds? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the whole All thing, right. yeah, man. That's the way. God damn you and your 28 millimeter sci-fi <laughs> miniatures. And definitely a paddling. <laughs> see, see there, I knew there was a good reason why we were going to get together for the first one of this year. I knew there was a reason. There you go. There, so, you, go. there you go. You know? So I think before it descends into any more badness than it's going to do, because we've got plenty of time for it to go <laughs> down any rabbit holes, you know. And Ian it will. Has, and it will. Yeah. yeah. And it will. Ian, yeah. Ian hasn't thrown a tangent out for at least thirty seconds, so I know he's biting it a bit to uh, yeah. to go on some random uh, roller coaster ride that he normally does. So. Then I will. <laughs> Now, when we were trying to put this together, we were trying to think, well, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We're going to just come on and just have a, a a general ramble and stuff. And that's sort of 50%, but we have to try and get some kind of way to try and railroad the conversation into something that maybe half a dozen people are going to be interested to listen to, aren't we, really? <laughs> that's, that's what we've got to do. So... 
So we're going to talk a little bit about um, the year gone past, haven't we, really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, everyone in here has all been pretty much in the same situation. I mean, I know um, myself, Ian and Matt, we're sort of on the other, sort of on the other side of it now because our government's given up on 100%. telling us what to do yeah. next. Yeah. Because we weren't doing, we weren't. Nobody was doing it anyway. Especially the government. So, but <laughs> Brad, where do you sit with the whole restriction things? You used, to, I mean, because I know you were one of the, you know, I mean, I know Australia is a land of basically ex-convicts, but it was, <laughs> it was getting severe to being some kind of police state over there at, at some <laughs> point, wasn't it? So Melbourne is or was one of, the, or I guess currently still holds the record for one of the most locked down cities in the world. I think we hit something like 273 days of hard lockdown. Now I've gotten some guff from friends in other places who are like, oh, you, lockdown for you means you have to wear a mask and blah. No, lockdown for us meant that you couldn't leave your house other than for like an hour of exercise or to go to the grocery store or to go to the doctor. Um, everything was hard shut down. Like you couldn't even go for a walk longer than an hour a day. There was a hard curfew, uh, you know, and that changed times over, you know, during lockdowns, but it's usually around 9 PM. Like it was, it was proper lockdown. Uh, and I got, I wish I got more hobby done during that time, but unfortunately there's this thing called work. So, uh, I did a lot of that, but I did get, uh, a lot painted, but we came out of lockdown, what, in October-ish, maybe November? Uh, and that meant the end of last school year was absolutely grim. And it meant that, because I'm a teacher, I didn't think that, you know, lockdown easing, cool, I'll play games. No, for two months, I basically just um, flogged myself at work to, to the point where I was a broken human by Christmas. But uh, I have a lot of really good friends who live nearby uh, who have been really careful about distancing given that Omicron's on. And while we didn't lock down, we've basically given up at this point. Um, we've had what we what is being called by the media here a shadow lockdown where everyone just said, screw this, I'm staying home. Mm -hmm. uh, and so while we were we didn't have the the rules a lot of us did it anyway including my wife and i because my father-in-law you know we don't want to he's he's waiting for his booster because of you know his age and whatnot we wanted to be super careful but i do have a couple of really close friends who've been equally isolating so we kind of created a gaming bubble and so i have to say that the very last week of december and the month of january i've played more games in than in the last like two years combined. Oh, yeah. uh, and while that's not saying a lot <laughs> uh, compared to what I played before that, it's it's just been a land of nuts and hun honey. Is that what is that what we're calling it? Sorry, just waking up. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's been awesome, man. It's been the promised land. I've been playing everything, and it's just been wonderful. So uh, it's really rekindled my hobby drive. But I had this awful moment where I was standing right over there. Uh, and I was looking at in all the different drawers where I have all my partially completed projects because all the other stuff's in there. Uh, and I couldn't decide what to pick up next. So on my painting table, I currently have uh, a Cobra Arctic paratrooper for a test fig for an army I'm working on. I have a VC model from Empress. And I have, um, by the way, thanks, Ian. Uh, <laughs> hmm. And uh, I have, uh, God, what else? Oh, Bumblebee from the Transformers. So, you know, I couldn't quite decide. So it's just sort of a bit of models for me to work on. Because uh, I can't decide what to play next. But I am playing in a fantasy, a closed door, invite only, um, sort of socially distancing fantasy tournament this weekend, um, which is a little weird. Um, we've rented a venue outside of the city and... So I'm actually play Warhammer Fantasy Battle Sixth Edition. So yeah, tons of games. I'm sorry, I'm rambling, but no, that's like right. I answered your question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I haven't played anything. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was about I was about to say so like you know we're the ones who have you know not been yeah. under this you know martial law that so like Brad's been under. 
Well, what Brad and was Brad's, saying... Brad's probably played more games than the rest of us combined in the in in the period just by doing it in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I played Dead Man's Hand. Yeah. In the summer, and we, we it, I think it's kind of what you're saying as well, Brad. I mean, I've got friends who are close by, and I mean, it's the guys I go to salute with. I mean, obviously, yeah, I haven't done anything. I've gone to salute. I've had like a day, in, like well, a couple of days in Warhammer World. So it's not like my hobby's been lacking in any way. But um, but it's yeah, it's just, but it's like a couple of things, like sort of people getting together, and then it's it's just. I mean, at the minute, I don't know if it's about like the rest of the country or Australia, but like Omnicrom's rife here at the minute. Oh, it's, it's like, brutal. Yeah, it's just like, I mean, thankfully it seems to not be as severe as some other strains have been, but in my experience yeah. from talking to people but it's just that risk it's sort of like oh i can't do anything i mean even like i'm i say i'm not playing i'm i'm still doing like playing D D every most weeks like online from it's a campaign we started at the start of lockdown longest D D campaign i've ever played in actually we're not playing D it we're playing legends of the five rings now but that's still you are still going but then just over christmas people haven't been well so we haven't played mm. since probably Mid December, so that's been lacking as well. So, but I'm just itching. I mean, and again, you know what I'm like. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm easily distracted with certain things. So, yeah, all, yeah, I was like, that's it, man. It's like, and oh, you've probably seen like all of a sudden, like last week, I went, oh, I'm going to start, I'm going to start on the Dread Skies finally. So I've been painting <laughs> tiny little airplanes. So, but and, and you know the stupid thing is as well. I've got a couple of mates who I would normally play with who picked it up when it very first came out, and they were like, ah, "I'm not really keen on it." So I picked up a game that I knew I wouldn't really have that many people to play with. So, but I'm painting tiny airplanes, so it's like, I think I, I think I'm finding my my niche in life is painting tiny airplanes. But of course, I'll find my niche next week as well. Something totally different. So, <laughs> yeah. probably painting giant over There's one or two people. good niches out there. Oh, yeah. Someone yeah. should do a <laughs> podcast about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, which, I think, we, I think we're doing one? that right now. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Matt, I was Chris. just wondering, have you painted an army since we started? Because I'm an army since we started recording this, right? <laughs> uh, um... So, I mean, I have sprayed an army since like just before we. <laughs> I, if it if if it had dried, I might I might finish it by the end. Um, <laughs> I, I yeah, I, I my new year new army. I think it's going to be new month new army or <laughs> new new All right week. patch. Calm down. New new week new army yeah. at, this, at this rate. Uh, so yeah. was it 131 in 25 days? 143 now. I was gonna say that's that's like that's like six figures a day, isn't it? There or thereabouts. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was I was looking at my numbers over the last since COVID essentially, and I'm I'm not I'm not a good painter, but I'm a I guess efficient one. <laughs> <laughs> so 2020 was obviously lockdown proper lockdown where I was actually off work, and I, I managed to finish 695 models that year. Uh, 20, <laughs> tw 2021, I, I got a bit lazy and I only finished 618. <laughs> and, <laughs> what? Uh, and then obviously this year is 143 as of today. Um, so I'm going to try and hit 750. But I know I am starting uh, uni or another uni course in March. So I, I thought. Think... I I'm fully going to say I'm, I'm starting to worry where I'm at. I'm going to put all my 2,000 figures I've painted in the last two years. <laughs> don't, don't ask the girlfriend about that. She's already like, uh, I don't have any shelves. I'm like, yeah, I know. Um, yeah. <laughs> right, with, with this, with Matt, it's just made me remind about something. You all know the comedian, God rest his soul, Bill Hicks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if everyone help it. You know, Bill Hicks was a big smoker. And so like every time he used to go to an audience, <laughs> He used to point out the smokers in the sense, well, how many cigarettes do you smoke a day? And the bloke would go, oh, I get through a pack, a pack and a half and stuff like that. Bill would say, you rubbish. I go through two lighters a day. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So I think, I think what Matt's doing, Matt's just not like, you know, at the end of the year, it's going to be a case of, well, how many armies have you done? And he says, that's not the question you want to, you want to uh, ask me. Because I can see it over Brad's shoulders there. It's going to be, well, how many IKEA dealt off shelves? <laughs> yeah. 
know, well, that's, just, that's, that's, that's going to be Matt's standard for the year. I, well, I, I inst instead of buying more cabinets, I've started buying just more shelves for the cabinets. Mm -hmm. I've just come. I've just found a really good storage system. Actually, um, I've been like, I, I, you know, everyone's got like the um, really useful boxes, which you can see up there, mm -hmm. but they don't fit in Kallax cupboards if you've got the front on, which was a pain in the backside. So I found a cheaper version of, but you can only get three of them in one of the cupboards, but you can get plastic A4 paper folders, which are about a, 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 like a, a figure what high, and you can get five of them in. So I was like. I've gone from getting like maybe 40. I'm going to go and show you. <laughs> so look, I'm like roving, roving reporter here. <laughs> As I went out, oh, I'm going to unplug myself because I'll probably pull the laptop off. This is, this is where here you about. go. Live podcasting, people. This is what it's all yes. about. Come on. There we go. There we go. Ah. Uh, considerably narrower. Oh, I'm the one at the race. Yeah, I think I think I'm the only one old enough and then yeah. obviously I'll probably start a thing that's made. I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. But I may be a little yeah. American centric. Neither do I, yeah. so it's yeah. fine. Fifteen quid for for five of them. That's that's cheap. Considering that's I think they're about six pounds a pop for the really useful ones. Yeah. So yeah, I should I should share a link to you for that one. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> But you can only have those if you've got armies that haven't got spares, yeah. Well, no, no, they're 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 uh... all, all, all the spit. All the, come on, because this is going to be complete consumer advice. This, as you know, can you yeah. get armies with large spears in them? In them? Well, there's, I don't think I see. You can't probably without me dropping them all. But it's me or me, me mortal gods. So that's all. Well, like, I was going to ask: Are freaks. you are you uh, blue tacking those down so they don't slide all over the joint? Well. <laughs> I would probably have to do something with them if I was going to move them, but but just for storage, they're all right. But yeah, um, some some. Uh, well, you can get those. You, know, you can get the war bases. Do those like inserts for the really useful boxes? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean, you could get one. I mean, the thing with the really useful boxes is that um, there are a lot of like outside. You know, when they're a chunky box, mm -hmm. so the interior. Probably is only about an A4, so they might fit in. So we investigate. True. I shall have a look. There Tangent go. number one. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Now we're cooking. Let's, yeah. yeah, let's talk so, about Tupperware. So Tupperware. Oh. Let's talk about Tupperware. That's what is we this, want. Is this yeah. going to tangent into you trying to sell us some Tupperware? Because I feel like that's... <laughs> it, it's now just a, a, an online Tupperware party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, can, yeah. you can buy oh, these, uh, these tup A4 Tupperwares from Ian Wheel's Tupperware Supplies. <laughs> that's absolutely oh, yeah. terrifying. Yeah, but it's all. But it's amazing that the random, like off-topic stuff you think of as a war gamer. You know what I mean? You like the stuff that you look at has nothing to do with war gaming. And you're like, I could use that for. Yeah. Yeah. Why have you bought? Sorry, mate. Yeah. No, no. Because I've I've long realised that as part of this hobby, I've developed a box fetish. <laughs> I, so I'll yeah. go to the shops and when they've got boxes in the shops I'll randomly open boxes to say oh what's the dividers like inside the box <laughs> and then you mm -hmm. think to yourself well what could I use that box for because as we all know and we've all got it you know Ian's got his all his storage Matt's probably got storage hidden behind that uh, the magic drapery that he's got behind him I'm sure Brad's got mountains of the old um, cardboards uh, what's the name of the company? Oh, it's the Compass. Knights of Dice? No, not Knights of Dice. Multi case? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I don't actually. I I have a million GW cases, which is, you know, sacrilegious. I have a couple of Knights of Dice cases, but then everything else these days is in uh, the glass cases behind me. And yes, the Detloff is new because that's a uh, bonus case. That's a bonus case. Uh, <laughs> doesn't match the other ones. Uh, but yeah, there's there's a much nicer one in there that holds a lot more. Yeah, there you go. They're this good is, ones, that one. This, this is my test of honor case, actually. What is that? Uh, KR multi case? This is, is the KR it? one, yeah. Yeah. I've never actually had one of those. Yeah, I've like, got a couple of those. They're good. I, good yeah, price as well. I've got a few of them. I can't remember how much they cost. I got them at a show. And uh, they, hold, yeah, they hold a decent amount. 
it was it was always that decent one when, when whenever we went to events like that. Yeah. It was always a case that so like one of the prizes on the table was always something from KR Multi Case because they were just one of those companies that just give you stuff if you yeah you know just had the gumption to just ring them up and uh, and talk to them. So they were they were always, they were always really good whenever I was putting stuff on. And I know I miss yeah. events. What are these events that you keep talking? About? I know. Well, th- th- this is the thing, and this is again uh, probably part of the crux of the. The question that we were going to railroad is uh, right. Yeah. So eventually, you say, I, 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 I've realised I'm doing the Brad job. When I first started listening to Brad, Brad, it was the um, LRDJ, mm-hmm. and it was always you who was the one who was trying to railroad the conversation back to the main topic at any point. You know what I mean? With yes, you, I you, do. Yeah. So come on, can you remember what your famous line was? What the line you always used to use on the LRDJ? Oh, besides slapping Lachlan. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, I cannot believe I'm blanking. Um, I was literally talking about this with Dave and Lachlan the other day because they were here visiting. Um, oh, I can't remember. Um, help me out. It's not too my too. I can't. I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember. It was, it was, it was like, something and now, um, and now some, back or no, it was, it was something, something I used to say because yeah. I, w- I was a radio DJ for almost a decade, and when I was a radio DJ, my friends used to hang out in the background because New Orleans and uh, my radio show was on at ten a- at ten p.m. Um, and that was sort of like the sweet spot of people getting ready to go out on the town. Um, so tons of people would listen to my show and. I turned into a little bit of a party atmosphere in the background. And so there was always this mob in the background of my show being jerks. And it was just corralling that mess. <laughs> uh, and then when the LRDG started, there were strange parallels there. So, um, yeah, it ended up me being like, all right, guys, this is what we need to talk about today. As uh, as my friends in college used to call me the impatient Bostonian. It was like, all right, got to do. We said we were going to do something. We're going to do it. And this is how we're going to do it. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's go. And so I guess that was my role. But I don't remember. Yeah. By the way, welcome to the, you can put on the three ring circus hat and I'll just do it this <laughs> <next> time. <laughs> Not my yeah. show. So, so it's one of them ones. So, okay. So it was, it was one of the things I was thinking about when thinking about what we, what we were going to talk about. So it's still, all, yeah. And what we're going to talk about, is see, Matt, Matt, Matt brings his own props. You know what I mean? So oh, you didn't supply any. No, 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 no. So it was, it was a case of what could we talk about to not to like, you know, curb the conversation that it's not going to go free flowing like it always does anyway, but just have something that we could always return back to so we can say, right, this is the underlying structure of what's going on. You know, sort of like the, the doses in Fraggle Rock, what they were making out the sugar cane and all the rest of it. So like, you nice. know, it wasn't part of the episode, but it was there. It was always there. And we we're going to talk about, so like, you know, probably, um, well, I suppose it's twofold, the question really is. I did pose it. We we're going to talk, probably going to talk about when we were in lockdown, about the, the games that may be, or the hobby. Let's, let's branch it out a little bit. Or the hobby that actually got us through that period of that period of time, because obviously, you know, the domain of being able to go out and get out was was gone. But I've just thought now because when we've all been talking and doing this, I suppose a more maybe pertinent question might be: Do you think that the whole hobby experience has now been completely changed going forwards is it going to be the same beast what it was before lockdown and now is it going to be the same after we've come out so maybe have your priorities probably changed about what you're doing with the hobby itself or have you just tried now like Brad was saying, because he's come out and he's got the potential, he's just basically, you know, <laughs> like he's been stood at the beach in his clothes and he's done <laughs> so like the Superman beat. He's ripped his T-shirt off, ripped his trousers off. He's got his pair of budgie smugglers under, underneath and he's done. Oh, family both. show. Family yeah. show. 
No, mate. We always put the this is not for kids on the on the thing. Don't worry about that. <laughs> that reason we always put we always put yeah. would you smuggle us on? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, mate. Maybe. That's why I keep riding the road on this chair. No, no. So you know, and Brad's jumped. Well, we can pretty much say you've jumped both feet, probably straight back into. You know the, the same style of hobby that you were doing before, and is that fair comment? So, round the reeking then. Let's see who um, wants to go. I, I actually was because you spoilers. You we did talk about a little. We talked this about this a little bit before we started, uh, as in online. And I've been thinking about this for the last couple of days, and I took a hard shift in my hobby about five years ago. Um, I was uh, up and I mean, starting in 1992, um, I started playing in grand tournaments and playing in big events. And after that point, I kind of played in big events nonstop until about five years ago, um, where I took a hard step away for a variety of reasons that I won't get into. But I, I needed to sort of be away from uh you know a organized event play and i'm not saying that it's bad um of course i love events i think it's great to have organized games that you can get in especially if you're time poor to be able to show up for a day and get at least guaranteed three games in depending on the system um slash seeing you know your old friends uh some of the best friends i have are those that i've made in gaming so you know it's it's great for that but when i stepped off that uh, merry-go-round of event preparation because that is what focused my hobby for a little while it really I really struggled because I was spending so much time you know on particular systems preparing for certain events that all of a sudden when I wasn't I didn't know what to do next and it kind of led me starting a million projects and then never finishing anything uh, and that in and of itself sort of became the impetus for cast dice because I, it gave me a chance to then go to a weekly show, not to plug myself, but to where I got to talk about different games all the time. And I got a chance to play a lot of them. And some of them I've, I, you know, to my, to my shame, as much as I'd like to play, I just haven't had a chance to, um, mainly because there are just too many good games out there. But in that, I, I've, I've sort of come up with my own sort of pace and I've discovered that, you know, I paint what brings me joy sort of thing, the, the old Marie Kondo. Um, and lockdown didn't affect my painting almost at all um, because I was I had already sort of found that groove. But it did give me a, well, cool, I have a couple of weeks now where I'm definitely not gonna be playing any games. So I'm gonna work on something that I've started and I'm gonna try and get as much of it done as possible, if that makes sense. And so I use that as sort of the goalpost instead of preparing for an event. And I'm a li I, I, I was shocked to discover that by no real prior planning, even though I sort of jumped around between a lot of projects that I actually finished my GI Joe themed bolt action army enough to play anyway. And so that was one of the things I've been playing with the school holidays. Um, and that took me, what, three years to do? So mm -hmm. that was really cool. But it now that I've come out of lockdown, it, I've been trying to catch up with both people I haven't seen, um, but again, are people that I would normally see and were, again, sort of closed house, um, so to speak. But also to play games that you know, Bolt Action, which is one of my great loves, but also to play games that I, I I promised that I would get to, and I haven't. And so, for example, I played Oathmark, uh, the Joseph McCullough rank and flank game the other day. Uh, and by the other day, I mean a couple weeks ago with my old buddy, jo uh, Jonathan, who comes on the show to do a lot of Chinese content for Bolt Action. And man, uh, was it fun. And I am ashamed to say I didn't play it before that, but it came out in the height of lockdown. So it wasn't yeah. like, you know, I had a chance prior to that in Melbourne. Uh, but I definitely want to play more of that. And it's just games like that, like being able to sit down and play games. But I was able to pull out old armies of mine to do that. So I guess to 
I think I'm, I'm long form answering this. Sorry, guys. I, mm -hmm. I definitely need more coffee. Is I got a lot of things done to be able to play games that I've really wanted to play. Uh, and I, it's given me a chance to go back and pull some old things out, touch them up and get them going. But I don't think lockdown necessarily drove that per se. Um, but I definitely got a lot done, if that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I think in a similar sort of but funny you mentioned Northmark there. You just mentioned it, that there, Brad. I thought to myself, oh, yeah, I've got the rules for that. And I was like, literally, but again, it's just one of those things, that stuff I've picked so up. But yeah, I mean, I, I was just moving stuff around here before and the, and the uh, Stargrave books on the floor. Forgot I had that as well. So, yeah. but, you know, I mean, oh, yeah. so, I mean, I think, you know, going off the tangent, what I was going to say before, I think, I mean, for uh, Joe McCullough's stuff, I think Silver Bayonet's kind of even overshadowed Stargrave already, isn't it? But it's like, uh, mm -hmm. but I think going back to the start of lockdown and me being me, and I think, because I think the original question that you sort of posed us, Kieran, was like, what's like the one game that's got us through? And I think that's probably why we've got to change it, because I think there's probably not been one game. Yeah. But for me, it's, you know, what one game this maybe month. <laughs> but, you know, I think about it. But I, I go back and it's like, I've had a couple, but I've had a couple of like periods. And I don't know if it was because I wasn't gaming as much or seeing my friends as much. Um, that I could like have like maybe a little bit of focus and a little bit of like self indulgent focus, um, and that's kind of come like full circle. So like, I mean, the first big project I remember sort of getting into at the start of lockdown was Carnival, and it was just something I'd, mm -hmm. I'd always looked at. And I and see TT Combat do it, so all the scenery is like cheap as chips, and I spent like the first. <sighs> first couple of months of lockdown really doing that getting i mean i've only got two gangs that's the start of the two gangs that come in the start set and it's kind of i spent so much time on the scenery got the scenery all looking nice played a couple of sort of solo games with it and really enjoyed it. it's a lovely little simple system and then you know but then i think you know then especially when early lockdown we weren't we were still at that point when we didn't know what was happening it was rolling on and mm -hmm. rolling on rolling on so, I mean, as probably everyone knows, like, I mean, probably my major thing all through lockdown has been my Vietnam stuff. And that yeah. was sort of like my next bit. And that was kind of like the 2020, my big thing. And I'm still dabbling on with it. Oh, this weekend coming, um, the new rules from Empress are coming out. Bohica. Bohica, yeah. So that's either Friday, which is the 28th, or Monday, which is the 31st. Hope it's Monday because that's when I get paid. I mean, it makes no difference. I can get it on one side <laughs> of the weekend or the other. But um, it's yeah. I I may have I may have uh, talked to a guest of yours, and uh, I, next week's cast dice might just happen to be with Paul from Empress. Oh, it's a lovely bloke. No, it's uh, that'd be that'd be a good. Oh, have you have you it's already it recorded it? Oh, in the yeah. can. lovely guy. I was one of the, actually tangent again. Um, that was one of the the, the downsides with because obviously. One of my big hobby things is going to salute with the guys. And mm -hmm. obviously it wasn't on, well, it was on last year, but it wasn't, it was the one that from 2020 put back, put back, put back to November last year. And obviously next year's has been canceled already, but it was weird. It was a good show, but there was hardly any games. So yeah. there was lots of dead space, but then a couple of people who I wanted to see like Paula Empress and it was just the way their stand was sort of set up. And every time I went past, there was like tons and tons of people and I couldn't get in. So there was a few trade stands which were like rammed. But no, um, but yeah, going back to what I was saying about games, it's just been like, I've been doing lots of little random projects and a lot of sort of like, you know, stuff for, like for me, more than thinking about who am I going to play with. I know my Gary, my mate Gary wants to play the Vietnam stuff. And, but as I'm saying, I picked up, as I'm saying, just this, this week, picked up Blue Red Skies. I know, again, my mate Gary, he played it when it first came out. He wasn't that bothered. And he's the kind of person who kind of goes, I'm a bothered, I'll never play it again. Me and him played Dead Man's Hand and I really enjoyed it. And he was a bit like, yeah, I'm not so sure. We'll play Legends of the Old West, which is what we always played. But I know mm. that's now going to be shelved. <laughs> but um, but it, it, in a way, though, but then coming all the way back around to the end of like lockdown, the end of sort of last year. And actually, Kieran, it was a question that you posed, I think, on Instagram about going in. I think we might have touched on this 
when we spoke on the last podcast, so I don't know if it was in or not, but it was about, you know, you went to the, the opening of the new, of the games store and there was like the 40k guy and he was sort of like, what game do you play? And when he said it wasn't 40k, it was like no interest. But it was that sort mm-hmm. of like, are you playing the right game sort of thing? Yeah. And then I was like, I'm getting to that point where I'm thinking, well, I do want a game or something. And all my guy, all the guys I play with, all ex Games Workshop or current Games Workshop staff members, they're all very GW centric. But we'll play all the stuff. But um, randomly, Huss, my old boss, he just and, and he hasn't touched forty k with a barge pool since two thousand, like when I had. And um, the, the, we all well, we all went down to when we went down to Warhammer World. They were like, oh well, let's play forty k. And I was like, oh, I don't have a forty k army. So, so it's like we'll we'll play kill team instead because I had like add mech in the last set and stuff like that. Enough of that. And it wasn't until I came home and I went, you know what? I've got tons and tons and tons of tau. Um, mm-hmm. So I've been re and the problem with the tau is I, I got them when they first came out. It was probably the very last release that, that Games Workshop did before I left Games Workshop. And it was the army that was always made for me, sort of like little mini Gundams, you know, running around mm-hmm. the table. And um but I could never decide on the paint. And I've had, I think I've done about three paint schemes, three or four paint schemes, different ones for kill team and stuff like that. And I've settled back on the original, <laughs> the original one I did when I was still working at GW. So I've been touching up and repainting. But then it comes back to the question is, it's like my mate Huss, like he's like just started kind of tinkering with 40k as well. So he's like, should I have a game of 40k? And it's like, not necessarily that I'm hugely bothered about playing 40k but i'm really looking forward to having a, a, a game with them with my mates yeah. and so it's like it's not necessarily the game i would choose but it's the people i want to play with so i'm sort of making a bit yeah. of a concession and paying lots of time <laughs> but uh yeah uh, so that's, i've kind of come full circle so i like as i would say i was i always say on the, the podcast i always end up slagging off games workshop Unnecessarily, you have to keep putting disclaimers in that I like. I, I love Games Workshop, but I always end up slagging them off. But yeah, I've come back. I'm, I'm a total Games Games Workshop fanboy now. <laughs> I, I I only put up the poster for sort of context for the podcast though. So oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. Well, it's go funny on, that on, you mentioned that. Okay. Um, Patch went to CanCon this weekend. Australia's biggest gaming convention, CanCon, happened uh, this last weekend. And, um, man, it was a ghost town, apparently, compared to what it normally is. And I was supposed to go up, but with Omicron and beginning of the school year, I was like, no, no, not doing it. Um, but he went up and played in the Kings of War event. And Patch has been playing Kings of War uh, pretty consistently for the last couple of years. And um, the Kings of War event was actually held off-site in its own venue. And so it was... They had more restrictions. They were they had more safety precautions in place. Um, they had, I mean, I understand that you guys are drowning in rat tests. I'm pretty sure you guys have bathtubs full of them and you just sort of swim in them. Yeah. Uh, you're not, you know, on mic. But we, have, you know, they're worth their weight in gold down here. And somehow the TO for uh, the King's War event had got two rat tests per player. So everyone was able to rat test walking in both days uh, to make sure that everyone, you know, was not negative before walking in to play the games and everyone's wearing masks and it was apparently like a, just a fantastic game but patch brian cook and i uh and possibly a couple of our other buddies are talking about playing kings of war at cancon next year uh, now i've played a couple games of kings of war in the last edition not even in this edition uh, I, I, i'm it's always been a game that kind of intrigues me but i don't think it will ever be my main game never say never but you know, now that my friends are talking about playing it, maybe I'll yeah. play it um, just so I can go up and hang out with those guys. Because well, though I talk to them every day, the last time I saw them in person, I think it was CanCon five years ago. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, the, the the three three mate, well, the two of the mates who I'm probably more closely linked to, as in games that I would want to play myself. Is Matt and Kieran, and obviously you, Brad. But you know, obviously, <laughs> you know, even, even I live in the land of Narnia. Yeah, you live on the other side of the world. I have a wardrobe. Yeah, 
but even 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 like you know to get the map it's probably actually easier for me to get the melbourne than it is to actually get the <laughs> down to where like, you are matt so um, the same amount of time same, the same yeah yeah but no it's it's it, it's that's that weird sort of distance dynamics of the uk we're a small country but it just makes everything feel like it's yeah ridiculously long long way away so but no, yeah, so yeah, 40k is my, my go-to, I think, for the minute. But I want to fan some of fantasy game, you know, I just mentioned off, Mark. I mean, mm-hmm. Matt, we've um, we've talked about Conquest in the past, haven't we? I, 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 that was one of my projects from a little while yeah. ago. But, um, I couldn't get anyone locally that bothered by it, so I, I sold it in the end. But well, that's, um, uh, Yeah, I think that's, yeah. And that's that's the problem, so the likelihood yeah. is I'll end up, I don't want to play Age of Sigma. You know, Kieran, you know my feelings about Age of Sigma, don't you? <laughs> yeah. So, but um, but yeah, I just want to play. I just want to play. As well, when's the new? Well, the the old world coming out. Oh, uh, that's out. still a couple of years away. I think. I think yeah. so. It's at least. That's, I think it's twenty twenty three, possibly. Yeah, I mean, when I was in Forge World the other month, that had like, you know, letterheads up for it. Yeah. And, yeah but it's um. Ah. Uh, uh, it's, it's exciting stuff, but uh, oh, what was that looking at? You see that somebody say that gino steam tank galleon thing that's 3D print last week on uh, somebody had shared on Facebook. I just know, think about no, the empire. I mean, this is the thing when it comes to like fantasy as well. I don't really want to do a fantasy army, I want to do some sort of renaissance European army that just happens to have wizards and giant cannons in. So. <laughs> Have you heard of sludge? Because I'm pretty yeah. sure that's a yeah, that's a thing. Uh, but yeah. No. Oh. So yeah. Kira, man, what about you? No, no, I'm, I'm going to let Matt get a word in edgewise because he's been sitting here for about 20 minutes and he hasn't been able to say anything. I mean, I, I don't mind listening you to this. Guys. Yeah. But, yeah, I know, mean, but come on, mate. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's a similar sort of thing. I mean, we've obviously been like in lockdown light version for quite a while now, um, and. I I've got quite to be honest, gaming wise, I've not much has changed apart from the fact that there's no events really. Because um, I was burnt out from going to quite a few local tournaments anyway. Um, I gave up on some games because I was just overthinking them, and I found myself just constantly thinking like, what am I going to play in the next event? What you know, especially um, Warhammer Underworlds as well, because uh, I was got into that quite heavily in the first couple of seasons of it, and. I was going to our uh, local events every month and even a few of the bigger ones and I just couldn't get out of my brain and I was I I ended up hating myself basically because I was like I need to come up with a meta deck that isn't meta because I hate playing the meta and I, I've got to do something different and then I found like every game I was playing the same deck but with different teams and I was just like I, I, I was like now nah, this game I'm, I'm done with it but um yeah, so I was a bit burnt out with events anyway, so I was just playing with my local sort of friends. Um, and we, we, we play probably, I try and get a couple of games in a week, to be honest. Um, yeah. Usually, uh, luckily, I made friends uh, in the, just before sort of lockdown with our local game store owner, and we're pretty much besties now. Um, then I sometimes run the shop for him. So it's uh he's got a couple of tables in there and he's actually getting his basement now cleared out and redone so he's going to be able to host tournaments and like small events so uh, i'm going to be hosting events there so uh, cool. get your mcp out uh <laughs> nice yeah speaking of which that game has uh saved me through the last two years basically but uh yeah it's um it hasn't really changed much apart from when we were in proper lockdown and obviously weren't allowed out um, I've still been getting in a couple games a week, probably, of various systems. Um, I got to play uh, Epic Waterloo Battles. Battle, oh, did Battles you? Waterloo, oh. I, with a trial version of the rules a few weeks ago. Um, so this is Black Powder, isn't it? It's, yeah, yeah. With Epic, a, Epic, Epic Black tweaks, Powder, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I don't know what the, the tweaks are, but I'm, obviously 3D printing as well has been my <laughs> hobby for the last couple of years as well. Yeah. But, um, Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, I, I 3D printed out a whole bunch of Warmaster stuff and played that a little bit as well, which was fun. And I need to play more of that, but uh, it's getting just getting people interested. But I was like, well, here's my 
3D print collection of Warmaster armies that are, you know, printed and painted. So come and have a game. But uh, yeah, I, it, it's been a weird couple of years for gaming, but it hasn't changed hugely what I've done, um, apart from, again, bouncing around lots of different projects and not having the social side of it as much. Well, of course, you got really heavily into Tabletop Simulator as well, though, Matt, as well, didn't you? And that's that's where, obviously, a lot of the gaming happened. And I, I've, I've actually kind of ditched that now because now we're coming out of it. I don't want to be taking away from real game time, re, real real game time by uh, sitting in on Tabletop Simulator and kind of... I, I, it's also not as fun. I, it's, it, as as yeah. much as it, it was a great thing when I was unable to go out to events and I was playing in a lot of the, like, uh, Crisis Protocol leagues... But it's just not the yeah. same as sitting with someone and having a game. And um, uh, one of my best friends here, Pat, uh, we we played on Tabletop Simulator. We 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 chatted on you know on Skype to record some some YouTube stuff. It's just not the same as being in a room and you know recording us playing a game and actually having a laugh, rolling some dice. So Tabletop Simulator was great, but now we don't need it. I I, I don't want to resort to it unless it's you know just for. I remember, I remember you talking to me about it like early on especially for mcp and you were like oh get yourself going get stuff on and i was always like i keep meaning to but i think that that was the thing in the back of my mind was the fact that i'm sitting in front of the my computer all day at work and then yep. coming off yeah. it and then but also knowing in the back of my mind that it's not going to be as good <laughs> you know what i mean like so you're the, 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 the mcp mod is one of the best ones i've seen yeah on there. um yeah it's so well done and like they've obviously put a lot of time and effort into it to make it as playable as possible but it's still just it's not the same you know it's not the same yeah. it's not your it's not your models you well i think that's it i was going to say it's my that's that's my that's my hobby really is painting my figures and putting them on the table when they get beat which they invariably always will do then that's just <laughs> that's just part and parcel of it you know what i mean yeah, so, yeah. as long as i can as long as i can get some nice looking figures on the table and yeah. die you know in whatever manner that, and then, then you know my job is done so you know but it's like playing playing with pic it's kind of like playing with pictures of somebody else's i mean yeah. it, was, it was like with, the, with like sort of like 3d renders of like oh they, the they, figures they, themselves yeah 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 absolutely yeah they, the the newest stuff tended to be just like a picture of them on a, on the right size base but there a lot of it was actually the 3d models of the proper models on there and it's yeah it was like i said they've done a really great job of setting up the uh the mod um and it, you know it has its uses i played uh, our friend paolo in italy i played him at game of star wars legion um mm -hmm. and you know it's great to be able to chat with him and play a game with him obviously without having to you know fly to italy yeah. um so it's, it's got its uses um and yeah. you know i've always you know i've still got it it's not like i've like deleted it and uninstalled it so i've got i've got access to it when i need it um you know if we wanted a game we could we could jump on there and have a game but uh, now now that i don't have to i'm you know i don't want to resort to that as a first choice and i know a lot of people still are um and i, I get invited to different sort of mm -hmm. underworld underworld leagues and mcp stuff but i'm just like no to be honest I'm, I'd, I'd rather go to this you know we've, we've got uh, a few of us now organizing mcp events in the local area um so i can just sort of kind of bounce up to them and that's the one game I'm not burnt out with yet, but I, I, it, it could get close. We'll see how it goes, but uh, I'm trying not to take it too seriously. I think yeah. I found. I mean, I haven't I haven't picked up anything new for a long time, but I think the thing that's keeping my interest in is the stuff that's coming out from Skullforge, because I'm finding like some yeah. of the stuff. But that's the problem with the Marvel stuff is it's so aims it, it it's not necessarily. I'm not bothered. I know Matt, you've always been trying trying to keep up with all the releases i have all the releases yeah. yeah but i've just I, i'm just getting stuff that i want <laughs> yeah <laughs> but oh, yeah. I, I, I know i know yeah and then, then there's and then, yeah and there's stuff there's stuff that i'm not that i do want i still haven't got around to getting um but then it's like as i'm saying like the, there's the Moon Knights, the Weapon X, and Spider Man 2099. Mm -hmm. I just dropped. I'm like, right, that, well, that, I know that, Weapon X is going on the print as soon as we get off here. <laughs> moon, moon, moon Knight and Spider Man have just come off my printer, actually. Yeah. Oh. 
that, but, that yeah. I, I've also got a, a, a four-year-old child who has now become mm, absolutely obsessed with Marvel. Don't know where that's come from. Marvel. No, who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So he's like, he's just like, he just sees stuff now, and he's just like, oh dad, I want that. Can we get that one? Oh dad, and it's like, it, it's it's not some. I think when he starts like looking at like the resin stuff, I'm like, oh, if he breaks it, I can just print another, print another one. one. But it's yeah. like at the minute, Daredevil, because obviously there's a new the Daredevil print came out mm-hmm. like weeks ago, but he's just because he's got the Lego Marvel games on the Switch, and he's like, and he's just been playing Daredevil. And he's like, oh, dad, oh, daddy, come and look at it. And he wants to just like look at these figures. But you know, the uh, oh, yes. mine in here. Oh, I've got mine. I'm, oh, glad, I'm, I'm glad I scaled this up, though. Like, yeah, no, it was when I showed you the, the, the Leaping Hulk next to my. my yeah, like, I was like, nah. It still looks good in scale next to the other figures. Yeah. He just isn't angry. He isn't as angry as the other Hulk, you see. He's not getting. Mm-hmm. I, I had to make mine angrier, so yeah. whack, it, whack it up to 130 or whatever it was, and oh, just no. reprint. Well, I think the, with the, the, he wasn't. He didn't seem to be as broad as well. And that's it. He's not yeah. it, even even now. I don't think he's as chunky as the other Hulk. Yeah. He's just he's about the right height now. He's just not as uh, not as beefy. But yeah, I mean that's that's again. You've just touched on it there, Matt, about the 3D printing thing again. I'm very much the same, and like I said, Skull Forge, especially the the Legion stuff. Oh, it's great. And, and then the MCP stuffs just the little, little down the best. Yeah, are oh, so so good. I mean, um, I mean, I've just got the um, some Black Sun stuff. I mean, that's, that's blue resin. You can't. Well, it's like you've just shown there. You yeah, can't I know. Yeah, that is. <laughs> yeah. But it's all like the Black Sun stuff, or whatever he calls it. it's Crimson Dawn. I think he calls it. And oh, the only thing, annoying thing is though, Darth Maul. That Darth Maul doesn't fit on even a blooming 27 inch base his legs are too splayed apart i'll have to stick him on a bigger base he's the nicest figure Guess but yeah scenic base scenic, yeah scenic base. yeah gonna have to be but yeah but it's just like little things i mean i think there's been huge issues especially in the states with darth maul listen to like podcasts people are going oh i still haven't got me darth maul I still haven't got me darth maul and then someone just gives you another darth maul of course it's it's latter um latter Darth Maul with his rubber legs as well so oh yeah yeah so no that's uh, uh yes I, I'm tinkering with some scum and villainy well robots. not to play the part of Kieran because I definitely want to hear Kieran's answer here but I think there's a couple of points in there that you guys have made as far as going back to the original question and that is how was gaming changed throughout all this and of course tts is one of those things yeah where all of a sudden people do have organized play that they can do on their computer and as matt says it gives you the opportunity to play with friends in other places Mm. um the local star wars legion group that i was i was a part of on facebook has turned into an online league and as far as i know i'm sure there's a couple of people on that who are playing local games but now it's only people talking about their TTS games for the Oceana League, I think. Um, mm. Or I may be getting that confused with the MCP, which is also going yeah. on. Um, and a lot of people's organized play has been through that. And, you know, that's great. And it gives, especially in countries like Australia, where, you know, our capital cities are so far apart. And uh, where wargaming is so popular across the country that it gives people the opportunity to play games with their friends in other places or people who are now their friends in other places yeah. after lockdown and all that. Um, I know that a friend of the show, Nick Gentilly, one of the original Dwellers Below, went up to CanCon this year to play in MCP only to hang out and play games with the folks that he's been playing online with. Yeah. And it was his first chance to meet a lot of them. And so, yeah, I mean, he was really excited about that. Um, and, you know, that that really does sort of bring a community together. I mean, we've talked about how social media has helped bring communities together globally uh, on, on countless podcasts. I know you guys have. I know we have. Um, but I think that TTS has been a, a big part of helping develop games identities because games like MCP – Came out uh, right before lockdown as well. Yeah, exactly. If 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 that hadn't been embraced by the online community, the game just wouldn't be what it is today. And the same with Legion. Like they, the by having that hard shift, I think it's going to be interesting for a lot of people who picked it up during lockdowns, who only played it online, who may not have played a lot of games in person. 
Uh, maybe they were magic players. Maybe they were playing video games or whatever else. Now those people are now sort of coming back into the hobby to play in person. Um, and I know that's not a, a majority of players, but that is a minority. I know a couple of people who have done that. Um, and all of a sudden they're, they're running into things like, oh God, I have to paint models for this game. <laughs> yeah. uh, even though they've been playing it for years. Like what an interesting phenomenon to be in, right? Tabletop wargaming where you actually need to go play on a tabletop. Who knew? Yeah. Uh, oh my it's God. weird. Yeah. I think, but yeah, the... it, it, it's a really interesting time. Yeah. I mean, I think again, I mentioned about sort of like my, it wasn't like my 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 sort of like uh, reticence reticence of playing tabletop simulator, but it was almost like it's all it it always came across as if it was a bit of a sort of tournament you kind of feel in mm. which again it I suppose when you're playing online, I mean, can you play it narratively? I suppose it depends who you're playing with. If you just yeah. decide to have a mate a game with a mate, you can just do what you want but as then again you mentioned about the leagues and stuff like that and it was it was very this does seem a lot of league based activity there yeah and that's just not i mean that's just yeah. not my cup of tea um not that i'm against it but it's just sort of like as i'm saying i just kind of want to sort of have a game and dick around a bit and have a chat with my mates it's the, almost like the game part of it is just a, a, another part of so like maybe sitting down Sitting down with a stranger. If I was going to an event, physically going to an event, but then where's the difference, Ian? Think about it before you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, here's the, here's the big difference yeah. for me. I can't throw things at my opponents, and yeah, you know, I'll flip the table. Actually, yes, you can. I lied. You can. I can. And I don't <laughs> want to do that with my uh, you nice can, Mac. That you can be... flip the table at TTS. It's just not as satisfying. Um. <laughs> Depends on how much money you want to spend. I mean, what's more, you know, some armies are worth more than computers and some computers are worth more than armies. Eh, yeah. It depends on what you're playing. Well, um, I definitely think my armies are worth more than my computer. Um. Exactly. Yeah. Well, hold on, hold on. Kieran, you have not swung in, buddy. What are, what are your thoughts on this? Because well, I see off, you pondering. Yeah. You, I, yeah. First off, I'm going to finish a bit about the thoughts on TTS, about why... Um, why it's such a useful tool and maybe wasn't just because I've not been able to get out. Now, if you imagine going back, and most of us can remember back to days of things such as the first edition of Blood Bowl, for example, where the actual figures inside those boxes were... Standees, um, really. Standees, weren't they? Yeah, okay. So on the shelf you, behind me. It's one yeah, of my favorite yeah, yeah. games. Love Amazing. it. So if you have a look at some of the games that you can get on TTS, a lot of them still use that mm. that same thing that it's 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 count, it's counter movement rather than models. Now, reason why reason why I think TTS became so successful is the crossover in the way that miniature design is done. Mm. Because miniature design is now done as a 3D render on computer. So it's really easy for them to then import that 3D render into the TTS system. And you automatically get, oh, it, it's a digital version of the models that I can go out and then buy from the store if I want to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, that obviously, I think that elevated it to a, a slightly different level where it became probably a little bit more engaging mm -hmm. for some players, yeah? Some people love oh. battle tech, though, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. exactly. Little stand-ups, sorry. Yeah, and uh, what was I going to say? The other side of it, I reckon a lot of, you, you know, um, Ian, because you said it always seemed like a competitive yeah a uh, slant mm -hmm. to it well i reckon that was brought about by maybe a lot of people being like matt was with the underworlds and i know brad you've talked about this constantly back in the you know the, the original days of you chasing meta it lets you mm -hmm. test out all the stuff that you want to test out oh, yeah. without oh, yeah. having to go with proxy or actually buy models and stuff like that so it lets you hone and think your skill before you then 
convert it to models and take it to events. So it, it's try it uh, before you buy, baby. Practice is yeah, it's practice one, isn't it? In course as well, just the, the, the thought that I've just came to me is as well, the, the, the fact that why it might be more competitive is because the people who like playing competitive, who like playing tournaments, are the people who probably want to get more games in than, than you know, the, the, the yeah. number who well, just wants well, to paint these figures and just have a, a muck around. So that they, they were probably, yeah, they were driving, <laughs> they were driving the sort of like the way, like, you know, like the, the meta of it, you know what yeah. I mean? It's like, it, you know, obviously it wasn't the guys like who were just like kind of going, yeah, it's come on for you know muck around. You know what I mean? Because it yeah. wasn't. If I was in charge, nothing yeah. would happen. So yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, because Matt was talking about that with the underworld thing that it was. Yeah. He got into it well deep, and it was the constant chase of, well, can I refine? Can I refine? Can I refine mm-hmm. until I get it to be the absolute optimum? Play? And you know, you and I still only have one trophy. Yeah, <laughs> but, but the thing, but the thing is, with that, you saw. You know the the light go light go on in Bradford's eyes. Going now, come here, sit down next to Daddy, and I'll tell you what really all this meta gaming is really all about. Yeah. Because you know anyone who's listened to your podcast will know about that background. You have and you mentioned it as well. So there's you know we all know there's different within our small niche hobby, which is a small niche hobby, no matter how you cut and dry it. Yeah. There's different levels of the hobby, and everyone gets out of it what they want. Well, there's niches but, within niches within niches, isn't that? Of course, the, course there is. Thing, oh, yeah. 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 Of course, there is. But I reckon there was what there would always be one thing that I reckon would take something like TTS to the absolute next level. VR. Oh yeah. yeah. You, you if could, you could I have, think... if you could have a VR version where you could actually get down. To proper tabletop level, and look at the eye, at the so like the eyesight thing, and it could be a more immersive experience like you get with VR. Then I reckon that would TTS has TTS has VR, but I don't know how. Yeah, yeah, no, but it's it's, it's, like it's not. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. it's going to be something like yeah, it's going to be VR. And it's going to be so like back in the days of the original Dire Straits video, isn't it? It's going to be that level yeah. of VR. It's not, going to be, it's not going to be the stuff that we get with what's the because uh, I took my daughter to it, uh, a place, the Oculus, I think is yeah, the, yeah, the big one. Oh, and I, you know, I, I was playing that and I was just so like, you know, how I know, you know, how I never bumped into things and how I was never throwing <laughs> things at the blokes in, in there because they were appearing up on screen and stuff like that. So, you know, it's, it's one of them, but I reckon. You could take it to that level. Or get it to that point, it would just be it'd be one of them, wouldn't it? Or a yeah. flip would be AR rather than VR. And so you could actually physically play with your you would have to obviously you would have to have some sort of table. Yeah. I'm talking about technology, I don't really fucking understand anything about but um you would have to be like, like you would have to have a table set up and the opponent would have to have like the same table set up. But obviously you know, you could have your figures on, and his figures yeah. would be like. But as I'm saying, I have no idea if that technology. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think yeah. it does, but it's like the. the I, I, I'm sure that technology exists. It's obviously how affordable and like easy yeah, that exactly. would be. You, I yeah. think you'd have to probably have like some sort of like models with chips in that tell you exactly what they are and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Some sort. Yeah. Yeah. You've got certain games that you could do that. I mean. Brad went to the you know, battle tech with the original yeah. X, yeah. X system. You know, that was a mm-hmm. game that you could quite easily, you know, you could have two people remotely just talking on the computer link with a camera, each of you a camera above your table. Yeah. And all you do would be like chess, wouldn't it? Because it would just be, yeah. right, I'm going to move, mimic that, mimic that. So everyone knows where everything is. Everyone can measure ranges, et cetera, et cetera. And mm-hmm. you've got the dice rolls on camera, so you can't fudge that. And you, you could, you could do it. You could you could have yeah. a remote experience. I mean, did you well, see? I know, uh, I know in the eighties, uh, not to show my age here. I know in the eighties that there were BattleTech competitions or BattleTech games that were played remotely, uh, and the way that it was done was both people because BattleTech uses hexes and everyone had the same maps. People would say it was just like t- uh, chess because the maps each hex was numbered. Yes. So you would then. You would it, just like in chess, you would send your next move to your opponent, and it would be like my um, my mech moves from this hex to this hex and turns to face this hex, 
and then fires, and this is what happens, and does this damage and rolled on this location, and then your opponent would mark it on their sheet, then they would have their turn kind of thing. But of course, that took a really long time because people were, uh, this is pre-email, people were mailing these things mailing. to one another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, fly by mail, mate. Fly by mail is the way, yeah. Whew. Talk yeah. about, people say Battletech takes a while to play. Forget yeah. about it. That's something else I got into in the last year. Um, yeah. Yeah, Great game. Right. So, hang on. I apologize right. for calling it clunky on a recent episode. I actually love Battletech. Anyway, mm-hmm. moving on. Yeah, yeah, moving moving on. on. That's it. Moving on. That's moving what, on. That's moving on. We knew he would be there. I knew it would come up somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, right, to get back to the question then. Okay. So, I, at the start of the year, I mean, a lot of people do this. You put, you sort of like, you know, there was a whole thing on Instagram about putting your, what are your hobby resolutions for the, for the year and stuff and everyone goes i'm going to paint this many figures math i'm going to play this many games i'm going to print this much stuff off my 3d printer but i i changed mine around a little bit and one of them was one of the things that i'd realized from the previous year now beforehand i used to get in and it used to be a case of it was you know the goldfish tendencies that we all uh suffer from the new shinies and stuff like that and whenever you know new games were coming out i mean that, that's what that's one of the problems with the industry at the moment is and it's not a bad problem but it is a bad problem just the amount of good stuff product that's coming yeah. out you know what i mean i mean we we all say there's just not enough time to try all these games out and if you've got something like coming out every week or every twice a week or something like that there's no way you can catch up so it was yeah. a case of right i was getting everything you know i was getting stuff that i thought i'd be interested in and getting it find the book and it's gone on the shelf and it's yeah. never come off the shelf mm-hmm. you know, i mean one of the uh let me see if i can reach behind me and find out like one of the games i was really really interested in because of watching the videos that oh, was yeah. nice. I was. I, we're yeah, talking I about BattleTech. I, I have that. I have that. I have that book on my shelf that I've never. I, really yeah, looked exactly. At. I've got the book. I've right back there, buddy. It. Yeah, me as well. I've, I've got the book. Read through it, but it's a case of well, am I ever actually going to get round? I started, to print, I I started printing some stuff for that as well. Or something. Yeah, I think. I think that. I think that's the whole thing with with yeah. Gamble Wars because I because I think what what it is. I bought. I bought into it thinking, well, could it be a replacement for BattleTech? Mm-hmm. So could could I just use, you know, Battletech figures for it and stuff like that? Mm-hmm. But when you actually look at the game, when you've got the you, different yeah, scale, you can't, yeah, I did yeah. say. Well, That's well unless I'd... unless you do have a three D printer, mm-hmm. yeah. Because if you've you got the availability of three D printer, you can just scale everything to suit, can't you? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So you can yeah. Use the same files, and it's it's done, isn't it? And it's it's, yeah. it's on the way. But obviously, that's something that's a lot. You know, Matt and Ian, you've both got, and all the rest of it. So it's a case of. Well, yep. maybe I need to let you guys uh, tinker with it first and then go say, well, as soon as you're doing that, can you, you know, put an extra one on that plate next to it, et cetera, et cetera. And Not if you want it that big, no. Again, that's, that's, one of the one, that's one of the ones on the shelf. But yeah. I've got to the point of, I've got to the point of realising now that what I want to do is um, quality over quantity. Yeah. yeah that's that's going to be that's going to be my new mantra going forward with any game so when games come out i'm not going to just sort of jump in and just start getting stuff i'm going to do as much reading up about the games there's countless youtube videos that do that get games early so you get playthroughs and stuff like that i mean ash barker is one of the main ones in mm-hmm. the miniatures i mean he has every game like two months before anybody else and if you can keep up with his Canadian pace when he's going through the videos and oh stuff like God. that. Sometimes <laughs> you, 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 can le- you know, you can learn quite a lot about the game. So I think it's more about, I'm going to be selective about the games that I'm going to buy into. That makes sense. Yeah. But one of the things I that I it. think has changed, <laughs> and I think it is for the better, but I don't, not sure. I'm not sure when it's, when it's going to, whether it's going to be a good thing. Will only the, uh, only to only to, so only time only time told is that I'm going to look at a game 
and it's going to be a case of does it come with solo rules? Okay. Yeah. So I think that's one of the big things that's changed because of lockdown. Whereas with a lot of games, it used to be an afterthought. Yeah. Or it used yeah, to yeah. be a mm -hmm. community driven thing. But now you look at the amount of games who have their own solo rules pulled into them, then, you know, it's one of them. It's giving you more opportunity. Yeah. You don't have to get together with someone. You can learn a game by yourself if you want to. I mean, I know it's a, one of those in existence because we can do if you want to yeah know? and the biggest proponent of it is mr mcculloch i think yeah yeah definitely yeah, absolutely these games it's you know I th and i think so, we mentioned it before i think silver bayonet seems to be the, the the first one he's kind of brought everything together you know he's the, he did um Rangers of Shadow Deep, which was more the solo thing. I was going to say Rangers, yeah. Yeah, he's done, obviously, he did uh, Stargrave, and then they added the solo bit. But obviously, with Silver, like Silver being it, everything's all in one big package. You can, like, and I think he's yeah. even sort of said initially, he says, I'm not really going to do that much in the way of scenarios. Like, I do um, additional stuff like I've done with Frostgrave and presumably Stargrave, because there's the whole thing in there about writing your own scenarios and just yep. even solo stuff. And he's sort of like, just, Get on with it, and it's um, it's the game I'm re the most excited for the first start of the year. As I'm saying, I've obviously picked up maybe at least two or three other systems in in the short 25, <laughs> 25 days of this year. But yeah, I don't know what you're forward. talking about. Yeah, but yeah, um, yeah, um, I, I, that's the thing. I've just started on me me English, me British unit, and I got the um the Prussians. For my birthday as well, so they're on the yeah. online. I mean, because because I've got on the the flip side that it's it's again looking at the games and maybe not going in and saying uh, about the new games, but it's probably as well once the overquality having game ha playing games that I actually enjoy playing from yeah. that I haven't touched in years. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And and re-experiencing those games and getting back and getting back to them, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, because there is, and uh, for for much as you want to say, so like social media is a bad thing, good thing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, if you go on any any game that you can imagine has some form of presence and community mm -hmm. online, and you can get to talk to people who are still playing the games, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So again, one of the ones that I want to get back into, and it's one of the project with figures that's actually sitting on the table is I want to finish my Mordheim stuff off. Oh, yeah. I started last year, you know, all those conversion bits that was going for that. Go back and play Mordheim for a bit. You know, yep. I used to love that. I used to love that game. So like 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was one of, me, one of the best in. ones. Oh, yeah. Like, I'll know. get a war band built up. I've got yeah. a digital copy of the rules. If anyone needs some somewhere, I'm sure I have. I'll take it because yeah. I, I haven't looked at yeah. them in years. But. Yeah, I'm sure it's. I'll have it. I'll dig it up. I'm. I'm. I'm sure I've got it. I'll. I'll, I'll have a dig around and see if I've got a copy. It's like it's sort of like I think it was it was a living a living um yeah. rubric. Yeah, yeah. But it's like an old version of, and it's not no longer living. But it's just a PDF format. <laughs> of it. So yeah, but it's like you know, it's probably the rules as we remember them. And there's but there's more war bands in there than. The bog standard ones were yeah. originally so i'll dig it yeah, up and i'll right. i'll pass that on you've got a key or do you want a copy as well oh, is he frozen he frozen is that or he's very still he's really still <laughs> he's not blinking <laughs> <No>. <laughs> someone call a medic Quick. oh no yeah let's uh, talk amongst ourselves <laughs> until well, kieran comes back in the room he'll be, Just, he'll be, he'll be uh, back I, yeah. I just want to touch on something that you said, Ian, and I made a note and I haven't gone back to it. And that was you, you talked about the self-indulgence of mm -hmm. um, the hobby projects during lockdown. And that really struck a note with me because I spent a lot of time, I mean, a lot of time working on things that were super nostalgic for me. And the further I do that or the more I do it, the further I seem to fall into that category. <laughs> I mean, obviously, my G.I. Joe project is the perfect example of that, recreating my G.I. Joe collection from like when I was a kid in 28 millimeter um, and being able to play games of that has just been awesome. Yeah. But I realized that right before that, I was doing the same thing with Star Wars, um, although I was doing it for Legion. 
Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I recently played a game with a good friend of the show, Lee Avery, who's one of my regular gaming buddies because now he lives up the street. We moved into his neighborhood recently. Uh, and he's not a big fan of Legion, but he loves Star Wars. And we decided we were trying to figure out what to play. And we just kind of looked at each other and said, hey, you know, what do you fancy playing today? Because we were going to play a game. And we put down this big list of games and then slowly ticked them off which one we weren't going to go through. And then we were like, well, I was like, well, why don't I put together a Star Wars game using bolt action rules like Craig Baxter used to do back in the day? And we had a blast playing yeah. that. But again, it's that self-indulgence. Like, is it bad that at the moment I'm looking at creating a um, Masters of the Universe King's War Army for a CanCon no, next that year? Sounds oh, no, amazing. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Right? Skeletor's <laughs> Legions, um, having some Shadow Beasts. I already have the Skeletor. Be uh, we can he hear you, Kieran, by the way. Um, yeah. Having, I have Beastman, Evelyn. Merman, Trapjaw, the whole, I have all those. I just need a hundred hover robots and That's... a couple of Roton and a couple of the oh. land sharks and I'm set. Anyway, um, but I also print, like, night, yeah. uh, Crooked, <laughs> sorry, Crooked Dice just put out um, resistance fighters from V yeah. and I have all of their V range thus far painted up and ready to go for skirmish games. But now I'm like, do I play, do I get the resistance and play like Spectre Ops? Like, like there are just so many, but it, it occurs to me, like everything I'm looking at is like digging into the 80s in a really bad way. But then it's like, I've also been looking at like Road Trader Space Marines because I found most <laughs> of an army in a box, but I'm short some. And I'm so I'm just trying to find some bits and pieces to pull enough to, to paint a, a Space Marine army. I don't know if I'd play modern 40K with it, but. God, it would be fun just to paint, but it's like, is 2022 the 80s for yeah. me? Am I just bringing that back? Like, super self-indulgence, right? I mean, best oh, yeah, have... Bot Wars, painting Transformers, yeah. like, and I have the Thundercats as well, so it's just like, this is terribly self-indulgent, and some well, that's Conan it. models, but yeah. I've nearly, I've nearly, like, you know, pulled the trigger on the Bot Wars so many times, but again, it, it's, it's, and again, it's, I would love to paint them, and it's that sort of restraint, because again, knowing the guys who are game with it would and you know the stupid thing is they're really really in like a couple of them are stupidly into transformers and i keep dropping them pictures and they're like oh yeah 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 not games workshop though <laughs> so it's like yeah but um but yeah it was my, my, my best buddy Sai came up this weekend uh for my birthday and he literally all he plays is seven tv and goes to a lot of the events mm -hmm. and but it's the ideal game for him because he is like it one is. of those sort of like tv 80s tv nerd mm -hmm. and he's and we were just talking and, and we kind of said because i randomly me and him is like my be, like best mate but he kind of got into the hobby he moved down to well he moved down to, to birmingham and now lives in manchester before i got back into the hobby and then he kind of got into the hobby while i was you know while he's been away so we've never had a proper game yet i mean other than like the odd board game but we're just saying, oh, we'll have to have a game of seven TV, and like try to work it out. And like, I was thinking, oh, I want to do the A team because I've got the, I've got again. Yeah, I was gonna say your A team look awesome. Yeah, still unpainted yes! things. Yeah, but but the thing is, what 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 else do I put in the t like the? Because then you know, do I just have some like armed, basically yeah, armed? I mean, that's that's who the A team used to fight was basically armed militia, wasn't it? So, um, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Exactly. So so um. <laughs> Yeah, so do something like that. But then you go again, it's you go off your tangents because I'm thinking obviously kits just come out. Knight oh, have yeah. had had the Michael Knight figure out for ages. Oh yeah. But then that's another that's another war band. You well yeah. he, he, he literally was a lone survivor. Um yep. I can't remember the whole intro now. But yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> who else who else yeah, do you have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't have you can't have a whole uh war band of just a car and Michael Knight, the Hoff. Well, so, yeah. it's when we get seven T V eighties, we yeah. might yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I did. Uh, I got a uh, a bag full of crooked dice goodness the other day, and I also got uh, the Scooby Gang for that. Um, oh, I love that. that Same nice. reason. Yeah. yeah, I got a oh, so many good models to paint, brother. So many the, good. The, the, the ghost, that Ghostbusters set is amazing as well. Oh, so yeah. good, right? 
Well, again, Sykes. Um, both Scott from uh, Knights of, or Scott, formerly of Knights of Dice, um, has done such an outstanding job of sculpting those vehicles. He's the digital mm-hmm. sculptor that um, Crooked Dice has been using to to create those vehicles. My God, is his work amazing! Like in person, his hobby's outstanding. But like to digitally design all those '80s vehicles, like Kit, the A Team van. Uh, it's oh, it's outstanding stuff. And he actually just has a Kickstarter that's about to go live. Um, he got a little bee in his bonnet, as we all do, um, for about, was it Cauldron uh, Overlords, the dwarves in Age of Sigmar? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 Car- yeah. Caradron, yeah, that's it, yeah. Yeah, that's it. He's designed uh, an entire set of terrain, like a cloud city. Oh, that I've, seen, is, I've seen this, actually. Yeah, he's just been posting pictures of it. The Kickstarter is about to go live. I'm looking for the link to talk about it. Uh, but my God, is it... I, he, he's just so talented. And just to... Uh, I'm so glad that he's doing 80s vehicles because uh, I that is my favorite. Yeah. So, anyway, not that <laughs> I don't want him doing stuff for other companies, but if Scott's going to do anything... <laughs> uh, yeah, it's Tired World Studios. Tired World uh, Studios. I'll and make yeah, a note that, that will be going on Kickstarter shortly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so good. Yeah. Oh, that looks cool. Yeah, I, I think I've seen that somewhere. But... Yeah, 3D print files. Just wanted to create something. And yeah, it's right there for you when it goes live. Anyway, so good. Uh, Kieran, are you back? We've sort of been uh, treading water and talking shop. I, I think so, as long as you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yeah, we, we can hear you. Yeah. Oh, I don't know what happened then, mate. It just... The technology. joys of technology. technology. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> no, no, that's a, that's another thing. There you go. In, you, you can't just... If you're playing a game of TTS, you can just drop out. Whereas in real oh, life, course, you yeah. can't just disappear. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I once knew a guy that did that a lot. Like halfway through a game, would sort of like, yeah, I'm gonna go oh, see far all these models, and then he'd just leave. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I knew it was the case that you know, with you guys in here, that you know, gremlins would not be uh, an issue that if I went. So I went. When I had a stroll around the block, had a cup of tea, <laughs> and all the rest of it, and come back, and you're still going because you know you it never doesn't hit the stride does it so that, no. there we go so yeah well, there, there was myself. about 10 minutes of dead air that we were just yeah. looking at each other awkwardly and well actually we were just oh. looking at kieran not moving yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> i determined yeah. if you were <laughs> no the, the joys of da vinci resolve and the editing video technology <laughs> that we can do it's mm-hmm. going to be seamless mm. the only problem is that i think i might have actually coming back into it I may have changed position on the screen. You have. You've jumped to the so, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you know the the whole continuity of the episode has now got to shot, and then I'm gonna oh. have to uh, rearrange it. But yeah, it's 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 all right. It, it is what it is. It is what it is. Anyway, what I we love. I, about? Just for the record, I love that you care. <laughs> well, I'd be like, Yolo, don't care. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. My face is in a different place now. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, I need to work out which way I need to sit to get my right side. So is it that way or is it? that way i need to see you know because I, I have to look just just <laughs> yeah. so if i go this way the microphone's right in front of my face yeah go this way it's not you say that it's in the main just, sorry, stick, no. stick, stick some googly eyes on the microphone you'll be fine yeah maybe <laughs> maybe 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 yeah i can go any oh. which way as long as co- my cobra commander helmet is in the background yeah you know, i keep i yeah. keep seeing i keep seeing that like just put it on <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No one can hear me, ironically, if I put that on, because it's a great <laughs> muffle. And that's saying okay. something, because it takes a lot to get people to not hear me. <laughs> uh, it's one of them ones. It's one of them ones. So yeah. where, where were we anyway before? We were at solo we... gaming, my good man, because yeah. you're absolutely right. That is That has been something that we see increasingly in the gaming world, is more companies are sort of embracing solo gaming. Bohica, for example, yeah. uh, will have solo rules. Um Although weirdly, and I have a question for you guys, uh, and I'll throw it to Kieran first. Kieran, I know that we've you've talked uh, about solo rules. I have only played, I think, three solo games total 
in all the lockdowns. Um, and most of those were two player games where I played both sides. Um, four, now that I think about it. And one of those was Battletech. Um, do you do you see yourself playing a lot of solo games? I, I don't know what it is. Like I can set up terrain and paint models and for days on end, but the thought of setting up a solo game, I suddenly get lazy. And that's yeah. not something I do. Like yeah. I'm a perpetual motion machine. I never stop. And like just the thought of like having to set up and then play a game by myself, like I think it it defeats the purpose, the social drive that drives me as a gamer. Again, why I don't TTS. Mm. What do, did you solo a lot um, what, during these things? Or I no, love no, the no, idea no, of a solo no, game. But I don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> now there is the question. Yes, we've gone past 10 o'clock, so that, <laughs> that is, no proper questions start coming out, don't they? Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, so let, let, me, let me run. Let me run through. Let me have a look. Let me have a look. So, uh, which games did I play? Uh, obviously, the, the one that started it off was Rangers. Yeah. It's obviously the, uh, a go-to one because mm -hmm. that was pretty much, like Ian said before I got cut off, that was pretty much designed to be a solo cooperative game from ground up anyway Absolutely. so there's so that one um zona alpha zona alpha as well yeah that's uh, another one again the same the same uh same principle you've got after that uh michael over at oaksworn did his mm -hmm. solo rules for borough and badges so that was another one yeah. that went on the on the list and there was there was a there was a couple of others um the the more recent ones there's uh, a couple of games that i've downloaded from uh drive through rpg mm -hmm. you know the print on demand place where you can either get it printed for you or you can just have it as a pdf and then mm -hmm. print it out what you want so i went back into all um games that i've heard titles of but i've never uh pulled the trigger on so it was uh planet 28 Mm -hmm. And the one that um, Adam over at Tabletop Minions channels raving about uh, space weirdos. <laughs> so so right. that so that, those two were primarily bought because a lot of people in the Inc Twenty Eight community are using those rule sets as the replacement for uh, scaling down Inquisitor or using modified necromunda rules or modified kill team rules because they are just well there's a basic set of rules and then the the way that you build whatever models you want in it's just uh pick an archetype pick the armor pick the weaponry pick several skills mm -hmm. each one's got a point value there you go sorted you're ready to play and you can you know pretty much design anything you want to put on the tabletop but they also have uh, Planet 28 definitely has its own set of solo rules as well. So that was another one. So while I was there, it was literally, I think it was three pound for the the main set of rules and then yeah. an extra couple of quid for the solo ones because I just bought them as PDF and then used the works uh, printer to print them all out for me. So it was all mm -hmm. uh, easy peasy as, as you do, you know what I mean? So um, I miss my works printer so much. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Off, there's a there's an office works within walking distance that I've been using, um, which is just you know click and collect, and they meet you at the door. They hand you your printed, your beautifully bound book, and you leave, and it's great. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. I mean, but but one of the things you were talking about uh, about the um, you could find it maybe problematic for yourself about setting up the table yeah. to play the game. Do you, uh, I think you find with a lot of the solo rule games the ones that actually have solo rules designed for them don't use the same size table as you use mm. if you were playing a yeah. versus yeah. game or a cooperative game i mean True. especially especially with uh, michael's stuff i mean i'm sure i saw that he was talking about uh two by two footboard yeah. Well, yeah or two and a half so is it? Playing and it, then it, work, yeah. then it works then it works just as well Mm -hmm. so, I mean, um, a lot of people are going down to the um, the size of the kill team boards. 
Yeah. 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 The GW player, the you know, those ones. Side. Yeah. Yeah, those ones that are what? Just under two foot by just under it's, three foot or something. Yeah. So it's some it, strange yeah. measurement. It's like, th- yeah. I think it's 33 by 22. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. I mean, but, but I, really, I what think, you, I yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know it is. You know it is. Of course, you know it is. But you know, you could you could set something up quite small on yeah. a table like that, and especially the way my uh, home style is that I could set it. I could set it up on one night and mm-hmm. just leave it out. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. just play something. You know, when I when I'm waiting for stuff in the oven to cook or something like that. <laughs> Just have a little half an hour while I'm waiting and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Good, I mean, yeah, my, my gaming, I think, is is going to be different from the rest of you guys. Uh, maybe, well, maybe maybe Ian, but maybe not Ian. It's because I've got kids. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? So well, I, the ability I with, to go out during a weeknight is also limited. You know what I mean? A couple, so, a couple of guys in my like gaming group um, that, that sort of help out with the channel and stuff two of them have got kids and the, those guys are obviously a lot less available for yeah games than, than other guys just a question on the solo rules and this is what i found when i was sort of dabbling with solo play and stuff especially um do you are you ever kind of embarrassed that you're stood there talking to yourself do, do you have <laughs> like no. when, when, when you're playing the game like by yourself i i couldn't play the game without talking but then I'm talking to myself and I'm saying what I'm doing out loud. And then I'm like looking around the room, like, who am I talking to? <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. But a, a, a thingy point on that, you can talk to yourself honestly. This How is, many times that, that when you, when you mess something up or where something happens from your opponent, I just turn the dice really over. Does, yeah, I roll a six. All, yeah. all, you, all you'd like to do is go, well, why, you know, why the F did you do that? You know, that's yeah. completely scuffed with my plans. You can't do that when you're playing against someone else, especially someone you don't know in a, yeah. a competition environment or anything like that. You get kicked out. So it has yeah. swings and roundabouts, doesn't it? The yeah. availability of it, I suppose. But I, I yeah. definitely found when I was, when I was playing solo, um, especially when I got into the Elder Scrolls, game which obviously had solo rules for it uh mm-hmm. I, I would set it up look at it and go can i can i be bothered to play this now like i've, I've set it all up but like i'm just going to leave it for a bit and come back to it um yeah. uh yeah i'm i'm almost like the step before that at the minute um my i mean i've i've printed a load of stuff off um for silver bayonet for the first solo scenario it was the one when you need all the wolves and I've got mm-hmm. everything now. I've like, like I think me and you, Brad, we were like sort of creating at the same time mini forests. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was just going through all my trees and basing them. They were, and they're all sitting there. It's driving the wife mad because we like, we've got this little shelf in the in the dining room and, and all the trees is like small small like uh, <laughs> cops <laughs> on the corner. There. I and don't then, know what you're talking about. Yeah, but again, it's it's just yeah. it's just sort of like oh, clear a bit of space on the dining table and have a game. And like actually, Kieran, you've just made it because I'm kind of think when would I do this? When would I play it? Sort of thing. But yeah, just do it when I'm making tea. You know what I mean, it's just like yeah. we've got a pretty open plan kitchen dining room. I'm just like, I might just do that tomorrow because I've got yeah. it all. I mean, you know, because you see, you see it in films and stuff like that. How many times you've ever watched a film where there's been a a chessboard in one of the rooms, yeah. and every so often when one of the characters is walking through, they'll just look at the chessboard and okay. move one piece, and that would be it. Yeah, and then they'll do it an hour later in the film as well. Same principle, isn't it? Yeah, so especially yeah. if you're doing is. that. You know what I mean? So. Except in the new Ghostbusters film where they start playing against the ghosts. Oh, yeah. la, 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 la. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. Oh, it you is. have to. It's amazing. Yeah, I, I know. I, I, well, I only watched it. Not going to cinemas at the moment, so. Well, you only watched it last week. It's very, very good. Very good. <sighs> so excited! So excited! Yeah, um, I mean, I keep, I guess I'm in the mindset because we moved house three times in the last 18 months Ugh. or 20 months, I should say at this point, because we've been here two, two or three months now. Um, I have been in the mindset where if I'm going to do something, I have to set it up, play it, and then take it back down in that short order. But now I have my own office. Uh, and one of the 
one of the nice things about this office is the space right behind where I'm sitting, which is more than enough space for a four by six with side tables for miniatures and rules and everything else. It's easy for me to pull a trestle out from the garage, set it up and leave it up. Uh, and I, I guess I just need to get into that habit and start doing it. But for the same reason, like I stopped doing the YouTube channel for Cast Ice was because I couldn't permanently set up the rig and leave it up. And man, getting the camera and the lighting and everything else, yeah. uh, bleh, bleh, it was the worst. And it just took me forever. Now I can start leaving things up. So yeah, yeah that's a good point here. And I should do that. I should set up a game. I should figure it out. And I should, yeah. as you know. Ian said, I was pulling out wolves as well. Yeah. Uh, I need to <laughs> need to do that as well. But uh, yeah. I mean, I think you just see in there, Brad, actually, I mean, the, the room I'm in is our old garage. We got converted a couple of years ago. And so it's it's garage shape. It's two mm -hmm. and a half meters wide. It's car length long. Um, but because it's now the office, it's totally changed its purpose. And we've got this foot on here, which you can't actually go. You can't pull out. I mean, you could pull it out if you jig it around. But the way it is, yeah. it would be like, you know, you wouldn't it wouldn't fit in against there. <sighs> But because I can't get a like a you know a, a big table in here, I've kind of kind of gone. Oh well, you know I can't really game in here until I get rid until I find a good reason to and set fire to this food on anyway. But <laughs> yeah, but in the short term, I mean I've got a, I'm just looking at the it's like a like one of the old picnic tables which we take campings just standing over there. Yeah. That's more than enough size. It's probably it's probably a two foot by three foot, but that's more yeah. than enough to play a little game on. And it's this is where twenty two by thirty three. Yeah, and that's is where I sit for work. I could put a table there. <laughs> so when you were talking about I playing could. that game of chess, I go, uh, yeah. so I think that might be, uh, that could be my, yeah. my, my downfall. Exactly. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> uh, Does that answer your bright, question, Karen? It's a brave new world, so. gentlemen. It's a brave new world. Oh, it yeah. is. I think so, mate. I think so. I mean, that's I one thing about I lockdown. Know, so. I, found, I found so many ways of, um, well, different ways of not being, not doing my job while still doing <laughs> my job. <laughs> oh, God, I wish. It's so, so do I. Well, I'm going to start funny... crying if we start talking about work. Let's not do that. My oh, well, school no, year I... starts tomorrow. Oh. I can Let's not. Well, it's my wife. Actually, I meant to mention this to you, Brad. Actually, it's my wife's technically last day in her job. And then she's having a week off. And then she's starting and, and she's going down your your career path so she's starting off as a teaching assistant which is a uh, mm -hmm. we're gonna have a year but this again something i was going to mention as well this year coming um will be a a, a fiscally challenging year so um mm -hmm. i think printing and um, painting the stuff that i've already got which there is quite a bit of and using my 3d printer i think it's going to be my new year's resolution thing so yeah so yeah ho hopefully she can qualify as a teacher as quick as possible <laughs> <laughs> I can go yeah. back to the life I'm accustomed to. <laughs> well, there you go. Ke yeah. Keep you yeah. in the toy soldiers that you're used to. But I'm yeah. sure all of us are sitting on Smog's horde of uh, toy soldiers. We'll have, yeah. I mean, there was a time my wife did the same thing where she went back and did her master's and then um, was a uh, a glorified intern for a year before she was a, you know, full employee where she works. And um, yeah, it took... <laughs> Took a while, and but it was like, yeah, huh? Maybe I should fall back on all those models that I'm already sitting on. Yeah, and you know, it was great. The only thing I had to buy was a couple books and some paints, and all set. And it's just a matter of, and it, I guess it goes back to what you were talking about earlier about the release schedule. And you know, we are so trained into thinking about release schedules being relentless, and that there's always something new coming out. And um, for better or for worse, that's largely a games workshop construction. They sort yeah. of innovated the gaming industry in having – I worked as part of the department when when that came into being. Um, one of the brains behind that was John Matthews, and I think John Stollard was part of that, um, where you needed to have new releases every week of the year so that your trade department, the salesman, could call stores and say, hey, I've got something for you to order to give you an in – so that shops would want to order and restock. 
Um, and that's not to stuff them to the gills. It's literally to say, OK, what have you sold? Let's restock it so that everyone, any kid who walks in can buy a tactical Space Marine squad, because apparently, you know, at the time that was the most sold Games Workshop box ever. Um, but it got us into this mentality that there's this release schedule that is literally relentless. And Games Workshop has gotten sort of gone off the deep end with that, with how many yeah. army books come out now? How many? There's always something exciting going on. Um, whereas, you know, you used to see a box or two, maybe a year box mm -hmm. game, that is. Now there's, what, uh, yeah. eight, ten, something and, like that? And different iterations of the same game. And, you exactly. Know what I mean? And, and the, exactly. Limit, the, the whole limited edition thing as well, that's all the, uh, oh, not limited edition, but it's the, you know, the one limited edition. availability. Yeah. yeah. And but then you tie that to the supply chain issues that COVID's caused and, you know, that you get games like, you know, or companies like Atomic Mass Games who want to put out, you know, all these fantastic models for Star Wars Legion, for Marvel Crisis Protocol. And I'm not crapping on them at all. I love no. the games. I own hundreds, if not thousands of dollars of those products <laughs> uh, and I play and enjoy the games. But, you know availability for models in countries like yeah. i have darth maul i've had darth maul forever but i can't get a yoda yeah um and I it's just get, I, can, I, I can get you a yoda <laughs> yeah. well i can i may have i may have a skull for yoda just saying yeah. um but i mean I, I i got a 3d printed rogue because lord knows when we're gonna get her down here it's yeah. gonna take uh, forever i think we, just, uh, mean, can we can't yeah. get it yeah come with matt well, uh, yeah, no, that's the interesting thing. It's like we always had stuff first. Yeah. And this last release, the, the X Men release, is actually the first time where we're not getting it first. Like, yeah. I know some, some Europeans have got it, and I think Canada has it, but America and England and obviously Australia don't have it. <laughs> we'll get it when we get it. Yeah. Uh, and, but, and, and, no, and that's no. Apparently. Yeah, I mean, that's no fault of anyone in particular it's just you know just the way it is with production and shipping at the moment like yeah you know the studios are creating these beautiful things and the release schedule is still people are trying to set it as 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 much as possible but then whether or not worldwide distribution of these things can match given you know shipping container availability i mean flights are now happening again so theoretically yeah. there's more shipping being done because a lot of the mail had to be put on surface and that is yeah. taking up a lot of containers blah 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 now a lot of that's going back on planes which you know theoretically opens up containers but you know how long until either the next variant locks everything down or how long until things catch back up where we're able to do this i mean it, it does definitely lead some of us to look at dead game, quote unquote, dead game systems that we already have or yeah. game systems or things that we already have or local distribution or local games um, a lot closer. Like I have been buying Empress stuff through a local store because I can get it yeah. and it doesn't yeah. take six to 12 weeks. So, you know, it, it has changed the way we buy and play games. And there, while we do have those relentless release schedules, whether we get them and our patience as gamers, when we see <laughs> these cool things, I mean, LVOs around the corner and we're about to see all these fantastic announcements from Games Workshop, from Atomic Mass Games and tons of other game systems. But when are we actually going to see those? Yeah. So, and it's the... You know, here's the red hotness, get you all excited for it. But that is now leading to backlash because people can't get the toys that they get want. Them. Yeah. Because uh, they've been yeah. trained to buy a certain way and now they can't buy what they see. So, and Games Workshop was doing a great job of like only announcing things like two weeks before it went live. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't work in the COVID era. No, so, no. and, I, yeah. and rumor no, no. is that's, that's why we haven't seen the Horus Heresy game yet. So, oh yeah, because uh, everyone was expecting the uh, the plastic box set, weren't they? Mm -hmm. And uh, God, goodbye money. Well, uh, yep. well, yeah, that's something that sprang to my mind again, going back when I was in Forge World, and I just sort of looked at all the Heresy stuff in Forge World and went, 
Oh yeah, it's part. It's, again, it was a one. They, me and you have talked about this map before. It's like our left, our left games workshop like a month before um, the Fellowship of the Rings came out. So I never ever played any of the Lord of the Rings games or the Hobbit games or anything still, like still, that. Still, still my favourite GW game. Yeah, and but again, again, you go to Forge World and almost oh, all the Hobbit stuff. And again, I'm talking like guys who you know, were still working the games workshop and getting there, like you know. They've just no, we can't play it ever, ever again. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> oh, I'll probably not bother getting it then. <laughs> I have some traumatic uh, experiences running uh, Lord of the Rings uh, Minds of Moria game at Games Day a couple years because trade sales bosses said, Yeah, look, you guys don't play Lord of the Rings. We're going to make you play Lord of the Rings at Games Day so that you'll learn the rules and get to know it and you'll love it. Yeah. Uh, no, never no. again. Nope. 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 Uh, yeah, that, the that turned me off Lord of the Rings, not the other way around. But yeah. The and, the, and the amount of times that, you know, we may have fudged the rules because we didn't know them. And it was just like, well, I don't, I'm pretty sure I still don't know how to play Lord of the Rings. Because Lord of the Rings esque. The, the the first the first games day I ever did with Games Workshop um in in Birmingham. And it was and uh, we we took it because I think every store had to take a game down with them and we'd brought um it was an orc dreadnought a sumo wrestling game so we built this ginormous like nice. stand and pushed them off and there was in the rules were very it was like you know very very sort of like just very orky and we were just shouting and screaming and it was just one yeah. of those games and then you had to cover you know if somebody it was like right your turn for lunch somebody will cover you and then then so like the table oh ian can you cover the the, the battlefield gothic game yeah for <laughs> half an hour and i was like <laughs> Oh right, I haven't played it for six months, and I'm, I i do not think you're allowed to shout when you're playing Battlefield Gothic as well. So it was a sort stop of like, me from shouting. Oh yeah. no, God, it was just it, it was like uh, all the kids around the table were really. I mean, I think oh we've come specially to play Battlefield Gothic, and I went oh no, who's this idiot who's shouting like an yeah. orc? Wait, uh, an playing yeah. this in centimeters? Yeah. Why are we playing this in centimeters? Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, oh, it was a good game, but uh, not when you, your mindset was somewhere else. <laughs> Funny Games Day story. I I don't... I was I once got an award for being the cheerleader of the year at uh, Games Day for leading the most people and the most yelling. And so what that meant was every year after that, uh, the Baltimore Games Day, they would have me open, be the guy who revved up the crowd before they opened the door. <laughs> and so my boss would just be like, Brad, you don't even work for me anymore. I was an outrider at that point. I would just come up and volunteer. And he's like, yep, yeah, cool. Here's the microphone. You can use it for the first 30 seconds. And then the rest of it, you got to use your own voice. Have fun. And so <laughs> I'd be like, all right, everyone, listen here. All right. And then get everyone to chant and wah and do that whole thing. And then, you know, I, just, I still remember the guys at the tables closest to the door saying, you are such a jerk. Because you got you got these kids frothing at the mouth, and when they opened <laughs> the door, it was like a, an ocean wave just coming over their table. And they're like, "Don't break the models! Don't break the models!" <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was uh, <laughs> was a lot of fun. Missed them. As was just missed the old game days. But no, I don't think actually I've, I I did really. <laughs> something in the back of my mind says I did but no I, I wouldn't want to do it again <laughs> I miss seeing I'm, you know you miss seeing staff and people from around the country and internationally that you don't normally get to see and you know you get to see some people that you know from events and other places who come over to visit which is great but you never really get a chance it's like a wedding you get to see yeah. everyone that you love but you don't actually get a chance to talk to them, talk to them. uh and then it's done and you drink too much and you hurt the next day or you hurt for a week afterward and you lose your voice it's just you know actually it salutes time. salutes very much like that because it's so chocker i mean it's different sort of you know it's not got the throttling kids or anything like that but there's usually so much stuff going on and you, you you see the people and like I saw I literally saw nobody this year, but mm -hmm. I think it's because there was just trade stands and no yeah. tables. I suppose around the tables people were a bit more chilled, and it was just I mean there probably was less people there as well. But yeah, it was you usually bump into somebody that you know, and it was a fun it was a funny show. It was a funny show. It'd be interesting to see what the long term effects of 
shows and conventions are going to be. I mean, I'm sure p- as soon as there's a solution to this global pandemic long term, you know, everyone will try and get back out or a lot of people yeah. will to try and relive the glory days. Um, but. I you think know, sol- I think when is that going to be? Yeah, I, I think so. The right thing. Paper, we're ten years off. Oh man! Woo. As long as that, as long as I'm still working in in the garage ten years time, I'll be, I'll be <laughs> more than happy. I never want to go back to the office ever again in my life. <laughs> I wish I had that option. I know. I know. I actually work. I even though I've paid so much more, I actually get a lot more work doing it in the office. But I think it's just the amount of faff on that goes on when you're in an office, just sitting down. And I can just. I don't have to spend yeah. hours on the bus you, in the morning. You, you probably have the mindset, all right, I've sat down. Let's get all my work done as quickly as possible and as efficiently as possible because I can rotate my seat around and then I've got all my stuff that I enjoy doing. It's, do you know what it is? It's when the Java wheel's going round and round. The amount of time I just must spend in the office wasting time because you can't really go and you've got to sit there and like just look at it. But you go, know, right, I'm going to make another cuppa or go and do this or we're doing that or that. And it's just like, it's just, well, it's, Look, working for local governments, I mean, it's, you know, they haven't upgraded the, the, the computer systems much. Right. Out question. Question to someone. Bring it all together and out question. Question that we can have relatively short answers to. Oh. All right. <laughs> relatively short answers to. But if this you, may not if you be want... the right crowd for that. Yeah. Game. No, no, that, that's that's what I said. Relatively short, because it's relatively <laughs> yeah. short based on the amount, of, based on the people who are in the room, isn't it? <laughs> there you go. So, we talked about the games that uh, I've comps in the past. Now, a lot of us are always keeping our ears to the ground, so to speak, about what is in the mists of the future so then for 2022 what is the the thing that you've heard about now it doesn't have to be something that you know definitely is coming it could just be a rumor but what is the thing that you're most excited about for this coming year three thoughts podcast coming back (laughs) <laughs> Good answer. Right. Toink, toink out of the park. There we go. Yeah. Well uh, thank you, answer. So. Um, I'll, I'll I'll go first. I do you know what? And just because you know, long time. For, I I really look forward to Andy's uh, Hob Day's new game. Yes. The coven. Uh, yeah. The models look insane. It's got that dark, creepy, like Eastern European feel that looks great. Um, so I, I, I'm not going to jump. Well, I'll probably jump in on the Kickstarter, but um, and we'll see where it goes from there, really. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, hands up, put back in. Well, show of hands, show of hands probably be back in. I don't. Based, well, based on based on what I haven't it is, done yeah, it yet, but so. yeah. No, oh, I don't think the Kickstarter is live yet, is it? It's not live yet. No, no. No. Again, this is one of the ones that I'm kicking myself about because I really end. And we've, you know, we've spoken to Andy and John uh, about it, like, over the last year or so, really, Kieran, haven't we? Yeah. But again, it's one of those ones when I want to see what the pledges are first. Yeah. Because, again, just what I was saying about Steph's changing her job. and oh, I yeah, don't yeah, want yeah. To, totally, totally, so, so yeah. I do, I do totally want to get in. And it's the same with O200 hours as well. Um, yeah. Thank you. That's literally my next yeah. talking point. And that's that's one of the ones I'm well, but I've got so much, and again, I've got so much stuff for it, and I, I, I'm hoping um, Graham might just do the rules, but then I think myself, I'm going to be missing out on lots of SES and German soldiers, which I already have a lot of. And but I was going to say, and you should have some. Yeah, yeah I've got yeah, yeah. loads and loads, but it's like, so I feel really bad because like I. I've, I feel like I've spoken to both Andy and John and Graham and said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going, oh, no, right. I will be, but not necessarily. But, and they are very excited to play them. But um, yeah, exactly. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. But I think going forward for me, um, Silver Bayonet seems to be one I'm really, really excited for. And Boica as well, which is the new Empress Vietnam 
rules. Because I've got someone to play with as well, so finally, yeah. that's going to be nice. Yeah. Well done, nice. I've well got done. a solo game, and I was my mate Gary, who if he doesn't like them the first time he plays them, he'll never play them again. So I might get one game out of it. <laughs> well, at least you tried. At least you tried. Yeah. I got people on that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, zero 200 hours is definitely something I'm super keen for. Yeah. Uh, I'm also keen, as I said, for Bohica. I will be buying that later today because I think it just went up for pre order in the shop. Uh, I'm super excited about a couple of things that are further down the track. Uh, Cricket Dice is talking about uh, doing a Dracula edition Ooh. of 7TV, which I'm unbelievably keen for. I absolutely love Bram Stoker's Dracula, the, the story. I've listened to it on audiobook, many different versions. And I first read it in high school, super keen. I, it's one of those books I've read. I've probably read more than any other book. Uh, and so I'm super excited for that. And of course, Seven TV 80s is coming at some point, although it may not be 2022. When it does come, I'll be very excited. And um, I do have literally a box full of Forge World and plastic Horus Heresy models. And I've been enjoying those books forever. So, and I have a lot of friends that play locally. So depending on what Games Workshop does with the rules, um, once the Horus Heresy box comes out, especially since it's rumored to come with my favorite kind of space marine armor, Beaks, mm. Mark VI. Uh, I will be all over that like a bad rash. Uh, but yeah, I think rules, I think those are the big ones. I mean, there's just a million little things that look really exciting. I missed the car wars because I hit, I hit a point last year where I couldn't spend money for a little bit and Car Wars 6th edition came out. And I'm super keen to give that a go uh, because Car Wars was one of my great loves as a kid. And apparently it's a modern game now. Uh, and it just looks great. I've been I've been part of that group and the models look amazing. Uh, but it is not out for Steve Jackson Games hasn't been able to get it out to the rest of the world outside of the Kickstarter. So I'm I mean, production and issues, right? It's not on them. It's <laughs> the world. Yeah. So I, I'm keen <laughs> to get that. Uh, and the G.I. Joe role-playing game will be coming out from Renegade yes. Games. Yeah. Theoretically, that's more role-playing than Choice Soldiers, but they are coming out with miniatures for that game. So Ooh. I don't know how it all comes together, but I do have an entire 28 millimeter G.I. Joe and Cobra Army behind me. Uh, and so by the time that comes out, I, I'm wicked keen to play. I have that pre-ordered and I'm, I'm basically sitting, waiting, counting the days. And I will be playing that online, uh, probably recording it for the show. So, hey yeah. guys, um, <laughs> we might have to do an Action Force version too. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. We're gonna, gonna so, do that. Gonna including do that. some G.I. Joe guys who follow me because of my G.I. Joe stuff, but aren't gamers. Who are who've been messaging the page saying, "Hey, now this is a game I can get with," and I'm like, "Yeah, oh, that's cool." Plus, my buddy Drew, who um, I absolutely, who I do the um, Beyond the Fifth or uh, First Marker podcast, his entire knowledge of GI Joe is the fake PSAs, um, where they, you know, the PSAs that were at the end of the GI Joe cartoons it was like, "Kids, don't play with matches," or yeah. "Don't talk yeah. to strangers," <laughs> where there's joke ones that were done in the '90s where someone basically just did really crappy overdubs of them and like mixed them poorly. And I mean, they're so bad, but his entire knowledge of GI Joe is roadblock running in the room saying, does anyone want a body massage? Uh, <laughs> and, uh, someone and like barbecue running in saying pork chop sandwiches. And he thinks it's the funniest thing. And look, it's a generation <laughs> thing. I get it. But you know, that's his entire knowledge of GI Joe. But he's like, no, we're playing this. And I'm going to do that. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, it's going to be done. Well, actually, talking about, about role-play games, it's really just sprung me in mind. The Hellboy role-play Oh, game. yeah. I've completely forgotten about that. Because that should should be coming very, very soon, I think, Matt. If you, did you back it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I've I mean, the, I've, uh, I've had the digital copy for ages and ages, but because it's oh, digital, you know I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't even looked at it. No, I've, 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 had, it, I've had it as well. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, that's, so that's going to be, yeah, that's something that should be good fun. So um, 
We right. need to do that actually. Yeah. That and it's technically D and D, so I, I know the rules. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, actually, I'm in part of my like, longest D and D campaign at the moment as well, which is still going. Which we started at the end of the first major lockdown, and it's still going. So we're, we're doing quite well. Yeah. Well, we did. We did a year of D and D, and then now we're doing. We've done a year. We're up to a year of um, Legend of the Five Rings. Nice. So I've, I've never. Got to get some more role playing done. I miss it so bloody much. Because again, it was you know it was the the inn for the hobby I, I, I was 10 years old and I yeah. miss it so much I still want to play the uh, Warhammer Fantasy one as well because I've yeah. had that well that's, the one, that's one of the ones I played uh, when I first started yeah. Rat what Catcher yeah. <laughs> I've played Would so it, many Rat Catchers over the years it was one of those, I think roleplay was one of those things that got me. Sorry about this, keeping it short and concise, Kira. But it was one of those things that got us into the hobby. But then this, all my other guy, the, the guys I played like roleplay with were more into the roleplay. And then I got into the figures and then they weren't that fussed. And then they kind of went off it. Yeah. And I didn't really feel the need to play that much roleplay. And I've dabbled with it with friends over the years and years. But I literally haven't. I, until I started playing start of the, of the year, I hadn't played it for 20 years. And yeah. didn't think didn't think I was. And it just, it was more of like an engine uh, to hang out with my mates mm -hmm. in lockdown. And But yeah, I really, really enjoy it. But it's, just, it's a social thing as much as anything else. Oh, yeah, I, was, yeah. I was playing uh, Call of Cthulhu roleplay during the first nice. big lockdown, and that was awesome. We got together once a week and had a tasty stout and played some uh, Cthulhu, and yeah, it was did, very good. Did, did you manage to get your, your good lady involved? Because I remember you were talking about she the, did. Ma ma the uh, yeah. Mansions of Madness that you both yeah. enjoyed. So did, did, where, where she doesn't you have an app. Go? She's not interested. Yeah, uh, no, enough, so... <laughs> Kirsten, no, she never played the role playing game, but we did play some Engines of Madness and a few other bits and bobs during lockdown. But um, we actually busted it out the other night. Um, Lee and his wife Libby, who've both been on Cast Ice, Lee, of course, uh, has been on a lot. He's the guy I was talking about earlier, Lee Avery. Um, we played because we didn't go to CanCon, he wanted to play some games. So he came over uh, with another friend during the day, and we played a rotating match of MCP, Marvel Crisis Protocol. Uh, and then um, my wife came home because she was out uh, doing a couple things. And then his wife came over, and we made dinner, had this awesome Indian feast, and then sat down and played Mansions of Madness as the four of us. So it was an awesome day of gaming. Uh, but yeah. My wife still maintains that if there's not an app, she's not super interested in playing. Yeah, Stephanie's. I haven't even tried. I thought Steph would be quite into that because she likes the whole idea of like invested, the investigating yeah. sort of side of things. But yeah, I still haven't quite got a. No. Just, I think there's still, it's still too many figures to push around on that table. And same with the Hellboy game as well because there's st similar mechanics between the two yeah. games. Mm. I've, had, I've had my partner play a few games with me when I've been desperate and um, it never ends well. Yeah. No. Uh, also, also, she absolutely trounced me at risk the other day and now I've not heard the end of it. <laughs> yeah. This is, is a funny story about my wife. This is going back years and years ago. Um, you know when you... Especially when we never... We don't watch DVDs now, but you know if you put like a DVD in the player... And like leave it. The the like the menu animation goes round and round and round <laughs> and round and round. And I've been trying to get her to watch three hundred for ages and ages. So I'd put it in and I got around to talking about it. I think it basically sort of like conned her in the fact that you know basically it's got Gerard Butler in a pair of pants all the way yeah. through. Yeah. Must be so anyway. And I think we we're probably making dinner or washing up or something like that. So anyway, the, the, she was aware that the TV was on and there was doing the little bits of animation and stuff like that. And it was probably him, you know, kicking the, the fella in the pit going, this is Sparta. And so anyway, and you had all that sort of like the bullet time sort of slow-mo bits with the with the spears and stuff. So we, we walked into the room and she looked and she stared at the TV, like as there were all like these sort of Spartans leaping over with spears like that. And she went, I'm not watching any of your games workshop shit. <laughs> <laughs> never, yeah. just, still never seen it. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, my wife uh, does like to talk about like, oh, you, are you going to go play Warhammer this weekend? And I was yeah. like, I haven't played Warhammer in like 10 years. Uh, but it's uh, it's just the generic term for everything. Yeah. 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 That said, yeah. I am playing Warhammer this weekend. So. Uh, <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. Good. Good, 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 good round robin on that one. Right. <laughs> I thought of another question. I'm not going to let you go. I'm just going to keep coming up with questions. And That's stuff. fine. <laughs> but ten, right. Oh, this yeah. one. This eight one minutes is all going to be on the same day. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, that's true. I was going to say, uh, I'm I'm good until t- my time tonight when I'm talking to John you, Stoller. You, so you until then, you know. Oh, whatever. yeah, come on, come on. Today. Come on, there, there we go. Just get it out. Just Brad just, just yeah. drops it. Just pick it up and drop it. Go on, then. No, yeah, yeah, hang around. I'm, 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 all right, I'm all right talking to you until I have to yeah. go and talk to John Stoller. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Right. So this is definitely going to be the last question because I have to go to bed and get up for work in the morning. Yeah. Right, so we talked about uh, the ones that you um, are looking forward to. Now the flip side of the question. If you could have, going forwards, one thing come out for the hobby, no matter what it is, no matter how ridiculous, what would be your one thing that you'd want to come out? I can answer that in several notes. Uh, First things, 70, the 80s. Let me play the 80s. Let's do it. Uh, I'm a one note character and that's my note. But uh, but seriously, I have found a 3D print file for the USS Flag, the largest production toy ever made in Western toy history. Uh, The original toy was six feet long. Uh, the aircraft carrier, you know, blah. I had a friend who had it and I got to play with it for less than 10 minutes once. <laughs> and I have my entire life. It was like, I have an epic GI Joe collection from when I was a kid. I spent every penny on GI Joe comics and toys. And that was like it. Yeah. And I've always wanted that. It has always been on my bucket list. And now that I have a 3D print file and a 28 millimeter GI Joe army, I, yeah. So I asked for it for Christmas last year, uh, as in 2020, and my wife agreed to it. And then the company that was in the process of quoting me on printing it went out of business. I was getting it printed this year. And then the guy said it was too big. So I'm still working on getting this thing printed. And people are like, yeah, it's too big a job. I'm like, cut it into tiny pieces. Tiny, yeah, tiny yeah. pieces. Yeah. And Brent, then, Brent. Uh, yeah, I'm not afraid of a hobby project. Yeah. I'll, I just, I want it in. So Matt, you feel like pr- I'll, I'll send, you a, <laughs> send you a lot of money. I'm sure it's going to just be that in, uh, in resin cost. But I mean, it's just going to be, yeah. That's what it, I want. It's, it's, uh, it's, and I'm it's never going to play with the damn thing, ever. Yeah. It, like, yeah, it's it in, doesn't like, it is the right. worst terrain ever. Yeah. But <laughs> if it, I could good. mount it on my wall. Yeah. It's going to be like, it's going to be like, what those things are. Yeah, you could it, do it in resin. It would, it would be yeah. too, it would be too many little issues, especially when it's small parts. It would be like, the, and too many hollow things which go wrong too often as well. I mean, it would be, yeah. How so? What? How big is it? Six feet. Uh, so, no, 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 yeah, but no, is, is it in scale to the twenty? Well, so it's it's supposedly the original three D print file. I think is six feet. All right. So if you have six feet, um, what is that? Seventy two inches, mm-hmm. and then uh, seventy two times, and I want it printed at forty five. Uh, I think it's almost three feet long. Oh, so okay, That's I mean it's not out, it's not outrageous, right? No, no. I would still is, do it. Is, isn't the isn't the superstar destroyer for uh, yes. Star Wars that about that size? Uh, well, that, 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 not, it's now about three foot. The superstar destroyer. Let's, let's not talk about Armada. Bloody, I start buying yeah. it. And then yeah, like, but I'm just, oh, I'm just thinking, not making you, anything new. Mm-hmm. I'm just thinking in, ter- in terms of scale. It's not really. It's not that outlandish. No, no really like. three, three feet is not too bad. Yeah, it, what it you would be to, like three to four feet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But what what you want to do, Brad, is get everybody 
who you know has got a 3D printer, slice it up into sections and send a section to everybody, but not tell anybody what they're actually printing. Amazing. <laughs> it would be one of those ones. It'd be one of those, you know, the uh, the CIA when they used to get code breakers. Yep. They used to give yep. everyone a little bit yeah. of code, but didn't tell you what you were actually working on and just put it all I, together yeah. and just go, I mean, this is what you worked on. I do, have access, I do have access to a couple of FDM printers, so... Uh... Yeah. But hello that. Yeah. <laughs> General Kenobi. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I think I think that and I, I I that said I do have someone printing me two night ravens at the moment and I'm thinking about printing a uh cuz I already have a rattler and some helicopters I'm thinking about doing a uh, a game that will be a cobra uh landing strip GI Joe's attacking a cobra landing strip game. So, look. I'm cool. a nerd. <laughs> Yeah, wait. So, but yeah. getting into those sort of narrative fun games where no one's ever going to do the rules for them, like reskinning bolt action and doing something like that, uh, I think that'll just be so much fun. So, yeah. Because yeah, no one's be ever going to make a G.I. Joe game. But, you know, why not yeah. do it myself? Anyway. Go on. Over to. Um, so, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> Let, let, what would you it. like to see? Yeah. Like to if, see, if, yeah. If, if money was no option, what's the top of your uh, all-time, you know, what's the top of your dream list? If you could have anything hobby-related, what would it be? I think I would like to see some stuff for Legion, like, terrain stuff, like... Like, ex, you know, like, some ships, some, like, rather than just... I mean, obviously, I did my uh, my tie yes. fighter. So, um, I want to cut. What did you do, one, Matt? Uh, yeah, but I just realised the wings fall off. Hang on. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that, I did that on my three D printer. But I mean, if yes. you, that's, that's, I'd have to do the interceptor as well. But yeah, just yeah, I got the interceptor. Some some more Star Wars you look and stuff or. Or maybe just get off my backside and doing a bit more of that myself and do some nice. I'm 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 kind of want to do a bit of a sort of scarify, mm -hmm. nice beachy, beachy board, but not necessarily scarif. So I've like I've got all my red, um, Crimson Empire mm -hmm. Imperials, and I've side sidelined them a little bit, um, and I've kind of just gone to do some very generic. Imperials, but we're like a somewhat or more, uh, uh, not so much that I don't want it to look like a deserty base because I want to get away from the whole uh, everything's on Tatooine, which John Favreau seems to be doing at the minute. I love, I love everything, mm -hmm. but everything just seems to be. It's that's not, it's not, it's not Tatooine. It's just another desert world. <laughs> but um, yeah, but I want to make it a little bit more tropical. Um, and and I've read, I've repainted a load of me, me rebels, and I got a load of rebel stuff for. For Christmas as well, so I've got like the 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 Hoff in, uh, Rebel <coughs> troopers, but obviously I'm going to try and paint them up not to look like they're all snowy. So yes, getting back on target. Um, stay more, on target. More stay stuff on target. Yes, yeah, stay on target. Um, more Legiony stuff. Um, as I'm saying, just nice terrain that make it look a board look like properly like Star Wars. I think. Nice. Quite got say so me. Yeah. Matt. <laughs> Matt. I want them to bring Armada back because I just bought into it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a great game, man. It's so good. Uh, I, 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 I'd had it when it first came out, and I sold sold it to my friend so that I could still play it. Yeah. And I was like, well, he's more interested in it, so if I sell it to him, he'll just bring it round, and I'm basically playing with my own models. Um, so we we did that. And then the droid stuff came out, and I was like, I, I just love separatists, like, yeah. and from the Clone Wars TV show and stuff. And I was like, I can't wait for them to do like the big round. Um, mm -hmm. I forgot what they're called off the top of my head, but uh, and then obviously they they did the announcement like, yeah, we're not really going to make any new stuff at the moment. It's not dead, but you know, it's it's yeah. it's in limbo. And I was like, ah, so I'd like mm -hmm. to see that, obviously. Bring, brought back or you know something done there but uh i, I just want more organized play stuff coming out from companies as well i think to uh support like small events um especially 
uh, so it looks like I could be end up running quite a few bits and pieces. Um, so yeah, I think for me that that would be what I want is just more organised play stuff, kits and stuff coming out from uh, from companies. Got to say the new bolt action campaign system that ties to Blood Red Skies to yeah, you know, I, saw, yeah I saw that yeah. Everything else. That looks interesting, got to say. Mm -hmm. I, I do like uh, anything that links different games as well. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the sun? I can't remember. Sandstorm? Uh, I, uh, or is I that? Think no, a, no, no. That's Normandy? That's, that's, Am I yeah. making that up? It may not no. be themed to a specific theater. I think it's just a generic set of rules. It's interesting. I think it's going to be a box campaign thing that you can yeah. then use to play out. I honestly don't know, but I'm going to be asking... Yeah. So I'll find yeah, out yeah, yeah. today. Well, <laughs> I've got to say, I mean, I, I, I'd had the the Blood Red Skies basic rules that I think I think they, they gave them away a while ago as a PDF, and mm. they're good. But the airstrike rules, yeah, which has got everything, makes. it's got everything in, and like I've just, I, I'm I'm going back and listening to a lot of the old lead lead their um, pursuit podcasts. Mm -hmm. And and I was just listening to one with Andy Chambers. I mean, it's going back. It's two years ago, and it's talking about the release of Airstrike. And I was like, God, I can't believe it's two years ago. But it must have just just been prior lockdown. And that's what Andy was saying. He was saying, well, the the box set's great, but I want people to be also be able to go. Well, I'm not yeah. bothered about the Battle of Britain. I know they just brought the Midway ones, but I said I want a fight on the Eastern Front. So I want some. Stukas and some uh, Sturmoviks and get them boxes and and he was even saying don't tell John this but he was even saying oh get your third party planes doesn't matter <laughs> they're not warlord or not so um, but yeah but, uh, I don't know no, don't say anything so yeah that's something I'm looking forward to playing I'm actually going to try and get my dad to play that my dad's never that's played cool. game. yeah but he's he kind of got in a roundabout way he got me into into war games by painting model airplanes. That's so, how my dad did it as well. Yeah, it? so that's what that's kind cool. of got me with the whole modelling thing. So I'm going to try it. So every time he comes round, he was always really into me Napoleonic stuff. But then he's going, oh, what's this silver bayonet? And then he saw the words gothic horror and he went, oh, he sort of like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> repelled, of repelled from that. Yeah. But yeah, I've shown him like tiny spitfires. He's in his element. So. That's awesome. Yeah. I tried to get my someone. dad to play Gaslands with me. That did not work. Yeah. <laughs> the last time I was home. So uh, we ended up playing Parcheesi instead because that's <laughs> up his wheelhouse. Like, that yeah. is my dad's game. But, you know, playing Parcheesi, like, religiously with my family when we were in Japan because my dad made a Parcheesi board out of the back of a Monopoly board. Um, and that's the game we played because that's that was when we did have family time. That was it. And uh, playing, that, playing that like that, like, that taught me a lot of how to play games even though it was a quote-unquote simple game, you know, that is their strategy to that and that knocking out your opponent's models, blocking people, um, knowing when to, you know, poke the bear and when to let things through and you know, there's a lot to do that. Anyway, Garen, what are you looking forward to? Well, it seems to be a running theme. So it, it seems to be a running theme on people my side of the planet. Because <laughs> it's always it, it seems to be something Star Wars working through. So Ian's got the terrain. Matt wants his spaceships back on the table, and me, I want something that's going to give me the boot up the ass to actually start playing Legion. I mm. want scum and villainy. Yeah. Oh. I want a I want a, a, yep. a scum and villainy set up. Well, you know what I mean? So, do you want us to do I mean, some of those? I know, well, I know, I know School Forge have got the, yeah. got the figures. Mm. Right, Ian, again, let's again, start printing. You know, yeah. Again, yeah, I was going to say. Again. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's going it's to be a case of, um, well, all you're going to be doing is reskinning uh, yeah. Imperial stuff or reskinning Rebel stuff. Yeah. yeah. Start you know what I mean? But yeah. if, if, they, if they actually, I mean, because, you know, you've only got to look at the success of Disney Plus with Mandalorian, yeah. Yeah. Book of Boba Fett. You know, um, Asaka is coming out, and and um, well, the Bad Batch. Yeah, oh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So well, if, they, if they if they give me rules for doing that, Legion would come off the shelf within yeah. seconds. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Well, I I painted um, the Empire Strikes Back 
bounty hunters painted the Mandalorian and a couple of his companions, including little little Grogu and um, Dr. Evan Zantz and Panda Baba. And since I've painted those, I've used them in almost every game of Legion <laughs> that I've yeah. played. Uh, I, yeah. I sneak them in somewhere, uh, as you say, as the, as the count says, but you know, just having that flair of color and those personalities on the board is a lot of fun, man. And, I mean, you know, you know, yeah, there's I mean, enough just, variety in the game unit wise now that you can find like decent analogs. Because yeah. um, a long time you just didn't have the, the variety, but now you can get some of the analogs and with, you know, upgrade cards, you can really, you know, make yeah, something yeah. That, that feels good. So yeah. I think that was my that was my hang up. I mean, I, I got into it from day one because obviously it's Star Wars yeah. and Star Wars is more important than the air in this house. But <laughs> <laughs> but it's like I, it was two things. There was there was the the fear of painting Star Wars stuff because I wanted mm-hmm. it to look right. Yeah. But it was it was just and again it it, it was um obviously it was fancy fight. But just for a long time there was stormtroopers and there was rebel troopers. Yeah, and you know, what I mean, I've still got a squad of rebel troopers that are probably possibly even the ones out of the box, which are only half painted. I mean, I'm starting work on them again, but yeah, now I took a step back, and I'm I'm so glad I went and did my because I went half was on the box with my my mate, and he took the 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 imperials because I didn't want to do the didn't want to paint loads of white stuff, and I'm so glad I went and did my red ones because then it gives a and yeah. it's to go and do and then using contrast and stuff like that after been painting up some some stormtroopers and yeah it's paint white you've got to put a bit of time and effort into it but um it's a lot easier than doing it the old-fashioned ways yeah yeah, yeah. Definitely. And a lot more a lot more a lot more variation yeah still waiting for got... cloud city troopers yeah jordan from skullforge if you're listening I think that's, that that is one of the options in the poll this month, isn't it? This yeah. Best Bespin guards. Yeah. Is it? Is yeah, yeah, yeah. Vote yeah. for me. Vote oh, for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I think I voted for something else actually. But... <laughs> yeah. oh. Is there a little? But, uh, what is it? Uh, <laughs> Keepers of the Pocket Dimension, which is a a little side company like Skullforge, have done the cloud cars. Nice. So yeah. now yes, I've they're seen cool. The they're great. Yeah, yeah. Love, they're love brilliant, them. and oh. they do. Some they do some cool background stuff, and there's some STLs. If you want to do a dungeon crawler type game, um, I saw, and I, the name of the place escapes me, but man, I was tempted when I was looking at, um, there's there's a company that does the Hoth walls, um, as in to Rebel Base. Yeah. And so I know there have always but yeah, mm-hmm. there's been the Death Star walls for a while, but nice. you can now get the Hoth walls, and I'm thinking, oh, that would be cool. It's so cool. <laughs> Put it out on the board. Oh, it'd be so good to have that. But, you know, I do love a good dungeon crawler type board. Oh, for so long. Actually, a slight, a slight, a slight aside, but it's going back to something that Drew did. And uh, talking about terrain, but you know, he mm-hmm. did that the, the 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 doorway into the um the imperial. The it's got the, the mirror mirror thing. I've been meaning yep. to do that for so long because that is such a cool idea. Obviously, he's a genius. He's a hobby man. (laughs) Yeah. That guy. Oof. Yeah. The Uh, best. Yeah, definitely. That is so, so very cool. It's so simple as well, but it it looks so Star Wars. Uh, Yeah, it is. At least we've turned we've turned this we're talking about like three nice. swords we've turned this into a beyond the food <laughs> beyond the first marker podcast now <laughs> just get drew well, on yeah I, I, I think we've basically touched on every single aspect of hobby ever in the history of hobby in the, i don't yeah. know how long, how long we've been going two days it, it seems like it doesn't it, yeah. it seems like it so we're what, starting two, on two, wednesday it's now thursday well, there you go there you go that's what we want that's what we want Cool, brilliant. I am this. Uh, to be quite honest, if nothing else, this is the best bit about lockdown that gets to spend online time with free yeah. people like you. Yeah, it's no, all it's... the big. It's all the big loving. That's what it is. It's all the big loving. <laughs> yeah, Let's go for yeah. it, shall we? You know what I mean. So well, thanks for the invite, man. I mean, it's yeah. been one of those things we've talked about forever, and it's always that thing like you you want to sit down, you want to talk shop, uh, but it's you know being on opposite sides of the planet, scheduling, especially with so many people, yeah, isn't always easy. 
Don't it? Yeah. That's very true. Yeah. It's very true. But we got there. We did. We got there. We've done it. Hopefully it's recorded. And hopefully the quality of the recording is all right. Because it would be uh, a shame if we lost it. But there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can just do it again. Yeah. Just do it. It wouldn't be the first again. time. Yeah. So, seeing as Brad started us off, and seeing as it's technically we're hosting it on Wine and Ian's channel, mm. I reckon Matt should do some work, shouldn't I? Yeah. Okay. I reckon Matt should take do it. Do it. <laughs> do it. Come on, uh, put you under pressure. Okay, I'm just going to use the sign off that I came up with you for before, I think. So, uh, <laughs> yes, hang on, we got to wait. Amazing. Um, <laughs> that's too good. Oh, I, I need to get my Mandalorian one printed. Um, so, <laughs> thank you, firstly, for everyone for tuning in. If you've lasted the whole time, well done. If you didn't uh, get torn away by uh, Ian's tangents, well done. Because <laughs> uh, we all did. Uh, so, thank you for listening. And uh, remember, why roll even when you can roll odd? Yay. There we go. See you there, guys.